really just a, just a crawl space right. that, that was under the house. Don't you have to um, check with the uh, uh, state, some state department to make sure that the fill is compatible? Well, we, that's that's you. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> you have to check with this character? <laughs> I'm <laughs> done. Okay. <laughs> okay. It, it'll, it'll, it'll be sand and bobble. Um, yeah, okay. Anybody in the audience? Greg, Greg did you say you were removing the, the entire foundation? Yeah. Everything's going out. Every, every, everything for the foundation. The garage itself is to stay, but the, the, the remains of the house, yeah, all the foundation gone. Oh, you're taking the foundation. Oh, see, I thought yeah. you just taking yeah, That's yeah. why they wanted oh, no, to take it out. It's out. Yeah. concrete yeah. blocks that are all no. broken apart at okay. this point. Yeah. Is the deck coming out also? Yeah, it, it's not there. Okay. It's on the plan. Yeah. And uh, I just got uh, a heads up for the for, for the resubmittal on this. New flood insurance rate maps are now in effect. Yeah. This was filed before the effective date. So you use you, you NGV. All filing. We haven't done a good job getting the word out that all filing tends to be an Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, any further filings I'll do on any on ADA, not a problem. I mean, even even with the flood map change, there's no change to the resource area on this. Right, just the, num the numbers have changed to continue to go. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and, a, and a, a new structure will have to go on the frozen piles. Make a motion for negative three. Second. Is that right? I guess that's. That's what Greg wants. If he doesn't. Yeah. I know, but sometimes he wants the wrong thing. Two and a three, and I don't. In the resource area. That's a, two, be two and three. Negative two and negative three. To buffer zone to a beach in a spawn of barrier. There it is. Okay. Fix it at two. I make a motion for negative two and three. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Farina, 19 Old Mouth Road, septic. Yeah, we, had, we had submitted a septic repair plan at this property at the last meeting and presented it. We were waiting on the DEP file number. I believe you've received that at this point. Do you have Board of Health? Board of Health is all approved. I make a motion. A second. Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? No, we sh I wasn't here last. last no, it wasn't reason. that. That's what we were waiting for. They didn't have the DEP in the board house. I think they have that, but they need the DEP. <coughs> uh, Duffy, 271 Central Ave. Hey again, uh, Kathleen McGuire, and uh, with me is uh, Mrs. Duffy. So uh, last time, well, let me say the time before that, uh, at the end of that hearing, the uh, commission requested a planting plan, which we submitted, but we did not submit the plan on time. So as a result, <coughs> we were asked to come back tonight. So what we tried to do on the plan is to show the location of the trees, the existing trees and shrubs, out of there and what we would like to plan. With that plan, we submitted a plan for the landscape items. And if you want to go through those items, if you've got to uh, read them off and point them out, do you want to plan? Mm -hmm. The first thing is to remove the existing poly tree. That's right out front here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, the the, the and we're going to replace it with a deep tree. The, the second thing is the room tree, the bare areas in front of the house. Located in 
green or what it would be at. And it would be a salt water, uh, take black salt water column on grass, which is this area here. Mm -hmm. And then, which we hadn't uh, proposed when we originally filed, was to remove the section of the driveway, which is up in this area here, and there's also a walk up here. What was out for the pier, and we're going to move and uh, see that area also. And then uh, along the slope between the uh, marsh and the young ones, right in there, what we tried to do is uh, color in the boulders that are strewn in the concrete uh, bottle that's strewn around that area, and to remove the small pieces, but the uh, larger pieces that are there. We were hoping to uh, perhaps um, break off the sharp edges and uh, fill that paint and then with uh, sand and bottle and try to get some vegetation growing in. Let me show you some pictures of that cobble, of those pieces of concrete. you can see the small little pieces and they're on both sides so what we're going to do is to remove those and then up top it's kind of not very clear to look at but this is an edge that's standing uh, at right hand to something yeah. that concrete slab and that part of it so this is stuff these landscapers said that we'd be able to uh, break that off and also remove that if you're, if you're, I know that you've been over there and look at the site, but unless sometimes you're really staring at something, you don't quite understand exactly what is there. And when we did get there and started to try to put that together to see what we were going to remove, uh, the question came really to stop. Because the stuff was embedded in the thing, but how far or long it would go. And I, I can't tell you this, and Puppy can't tell you about when that material was put there. But I suspect it was after the of the So again, that's uh, that's what we're proposing to do there. Kevin, you've got two different materials. I, if I saw this correctly, right. you've got pieces of, of asphalt. Or asphalt. Isn't that what that no, concrete? No, that's, that's concrete. Oh, that was concrete, was yes. it? Okay. Yeah, there are two pieces, two different types of materials. There's a bolt, it's not a true bolt, it's the And there are, there are the four concrete sections there. And there are also uh, cinder blocks there. And part of the uh, removal would be for the small pieces of the concrete and the removal of the cinder blocks. Okay. But again, it's almost like you're going to have to go out there. Uh, even from the file itself, this is stuff can say that, 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 that's going to go, and this can stay. But again, if you see that thing and you look at it, <coughs> there are pieces that you really can't pull up. Well, then if you do, do you want to rip the whole bank apart to no. do it too? No. Yeah. No. What's that? Oh, well, you know what I meant. Get in, get, rip the marsh apart, trying to, yeah. how much do we want to excavate? You know, might do more harm than good for some of the pig stuff. I, I would rec I would see I would suggest you recommend that all of the concrete be removed. There's five boulders that are embedded in the marsh part way down that are two to four times. I would suggest leaving those boulders in place, but not the concrete. Well if the concrete is up and and in and you and you can knock it off at at, at grade. Uh, you don't want to pull it all up, I wouldn't have thought. Well, some, some, of it's, some of the concrete slabs are pretty sizable. They're embedded in the, they're embedded in, it's a, it's a, it's a dune, but it's an artificial dune. It's overwashed yeah. and there's some film material and stuff like this. But call it a dune because that's what it is. That, by regulation, you have to call it a dune. So just call it the back side of the dune because that's, by regulation, you have to call it on a very beach. So the concrete is embedded in, even though it's some of it's filled, it's not sand. It still needs to be called the dome for the regulation purposes. But there's concrete embedded in it. There are concrete slabs embedded in, in it. You put it pretty substantially embedded in it. There's a concrete slab. I've never seen a concrete slab more than, more than 12 inches thick, so I'm guessing the concrete. And there's a lot of other 
broken on concrete that's part of that whole array that's only made in four or six inches. So I would suggest to pull all of the concrete out. Could, could you and, and Kevin go with a with a uh, spray can and spray those that you know like uh, like you're timbering a, a well he's uh, saying all though property. all yeah. you I don't have to paint if you do all with some bank we go over and spray up the uh, the slabs because they are <coughs> pretty well stuck in there uh, but uh, but uh, but if the concrete slabs are the, are the same slabs that are there yeah. that are dislodged they're only four to six inches thick. Uh, 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 there's one on there. Okay. Sorry, it's there's one on there that's big. If we, um, oh, we I know they're, I know they're, I know they're linear, linearly, they're pretty sizable. Okay. But I don't think you're going to find any thicker than the okay. slabs that are all over. If we come across uh, something that's embedded in there that's over four inches, can it stay there? As long as it, it knocked down the shock edges. I, would say, I think it's dangerous to say four inches. I would say that the concrete slabs. Yes, they are. And is and is there's a lot of concrete. Yes, yes there, there is. They're all part of the same wherever they came from. They're all part of the same source. So they're all going to be the same thickness. If you find one that's different, then I'll come onto the site. Yeah. But my suggestion would be to remove the, remove the concrete slabs, leave the boulders that are in the margin buried halfway, leave those in place. And when you remove the con concrete slabs, they're going to recontour their implant and stabilize it. Mm -hmm. Which, is the, which I think is the plan anyway. Is yeah, I, I think the uh, leaving them there is going to stabilize it even more. At least when we, if we pull those out, can we get any kind of a storm in there? With I uh, done some uh, landscaping and planting, it's, it's just going to be it's all going to get washed away. And yeah. when you do start to pull those those boulders out, Jim, if you look at if you look at this, just this picture. You've got one piece of concrete going right into the uh, into the dune. Um, if it were sitting on top, I would agree with you. But that could very easily be two feet down, and you'd ruin what is what's left. It seems to me if you try to take the whole thing up. But if you could just cut the top off, you know. Um, you would solve the problem of, of, of making it, um, of getting rid of stuff and, and making it uh, more, uh, making it safer, it would seem to me, without, without ruining the doom. That, I mean, that would be, now if it were just laying on the, on the surface, that's one thing. You could just pick it up and leave it. But, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. that's my thought. I mean, as you walk along the back side, some of it on the north side is scarf, is scarf. I mean, the whole thing should be recon with a blend. That's but my problem with leaving concrete there, okay? And they come over and they put a ton of beach sand on it. A northeaster comes, we got the concrete back again. I strongly feel the concrete needs to go so that can become a natural dune again without concrete in it. And then your sand's going to go, have, you know, the ebb and flow. But I think after a couple of good northeasters, if we get some this winter, you're back to square one with all this concrete sticking out because the sand might be washed away more so than what's already there. Because we never know what a northeast is going to do. Yeah, the cobble could that's come true. over. I, I mean, we just don't know. So that's why I, I kind of agree with Jim. I mean, I'm only one voice, but that's kind of my feeling. You take the concrete out, and we get about the good northeast stones that come in that direction. It's going to take the bank. But that's mother nature. That, that's mother nature. That is not man made material. And again, Please don't take this as uh, being a, a wise guy attitude type thing. But the only reason it's brought to the commission's attention is because Mrs. Duffy received this uh, cease and desist on the property. If that hadn't happened, we wouldn't be discussing the property that's been here for four years and probably stay here for another four years. But guess what? It's the, it did happen. She, did not, yeah, she, did she had a cease it. and desist. It did happen, so now we have to deal with the whole property. But it wasn't a problem. Well, it it was a problem. Right. It just had to be brought. So
somebody sometimes has to just complain. You want to continue with the rest of the, the rest list? The rest of the item, sure. Okay, uh, hopefully it's a little bit easier. Uh, this is uh, the plant, uh, seven rows of results, plants along the top of the slope. Those are shaded on red. There's one existing rows of results over there. So those are on the top of the I uh, plant three pine trees, one blueberry bush, and one cedar tree along the south side of the property. This will be the south side, and there will be the areas there. So I'll show you the again. This is the row of pines that are there. Again, they're a lot smaller than the other. They're a lot smaller than the area, but the rest of it is the distance that does not have to be. All right, then uh, we're back into the driveway. I imagine if you'd like to remove the top of the driveway. And you'd also like permission to repave the other sections of the driveway. Should be taking out about 1,700 square feet of asphalt in that walkway at that part of the driveway. And the bottom part would be about uh, 2,700 square feet. Again, uh, there's six houses on that side of the street. Every one of them has a nice pay price. And most some of those houses have been there for a while. And I'm quite sure of that driveway work on that property. Unfortunately, the previous owner did not repair property at all after the construction. Uh, some of it and one of the dumps, I believe it's my field, takes the uh, cuttings on Saturday, so she removed some last Saturday and she plans on removing the rest of it this Saturday. And she did remove um, uh, some of the debris that was also on the uh, south side of the driveway. I should mention also that the area along the north side, I'm sorry, the south side of the driveway. We're going to do that with the blueberries and the, uh, and the cedar tree plantings. It's, um, it's, it's sand and cobble now, and she's just going to break that. She's not going to try to see that. So the only idea of seeing would be on the end of the driveway. It's only kind of out. And also, there's a walkway that's in front of the house here. It's all falling. Show you a picture of that. You like to repair that. That is something I would assume that they're not being a concrete person that they'd have to break up and then almost like start over again. Is that uh, the previous owner, and he built that, he built it up in a mold. 
very smart man. And looking at the profile, if she raises the height of the wall, she will only affect the first 22 feet of land behind the wall because of the slope going up to the house. If you look at that profile, it's a little shaded and wet. And the top of the wall to be raised the eight inches is also shaded and wet. Can you see it up there? Mm -hmm. uh, I don't think Mrs. Duffy is going to have uh, much problems with the uh, washover now. Uh, I'm going to show you this picture. This is uh, taken today. It's me sitting on the wall. Sitting on the wall, looking underneath the house that's across the street. Mm -hmm. Just the moon side where it would not be <coughs> in. It's going to send water right across that street. Mm -hmm. What she's trying to do is protect the septic system that's in front of the house. By raising that wall, it is not going to not going to hurt any anything else <coughs> other than protect that that area that's behind the wall. And it's 18 inches. And it's only a front I don't want to do it. It's not going to touch anything on that side. And then it's the front right along here, right up to the drive, which is not going to touch anything on the here. So there is absolutely no protection. What she was getting before was the overwash from the materials that were underneath the houses across the street. It's gone. It's all scoured it's now, yeah. And again, what it reminds me of, uh, when I would do down, drift way down Kent Road, 10th Street, and I take a left look over at Pagan's Beach, and I remember when they put all those houses up on stilts after that big storm, and I said to myself, right underneath those houses and it's going to take the houses across the street away and it's gone there. And it's the same situation unless these people that are out on Central Labs have to rebuild some sort of vetment, vetment up across the houses. It's not going to affect her house, I don't think, because again it's going to roll, but it may do the damage of being a sure septic system. And again, asking to, and again, I'm going to tell you that there's six houses along that way. And five of the houses, three of the four houses, three of the six houses, other than this country, have walls in front of them. And they're a lot higher than what uh, this country's wall is. And they're probably even higher than what that she wants to raise. But I think, it, I mean, you have to really give that some consideration to, to allow her to protect the property. It's not, it's not like a gigantic seawall, good looking wall, you can raise that, uh, raise the hand cut brick wall, I'm sure you can see it. sort of at a similar line to what's happening with other houses. Yes, we are. But do you need to get approval from the town to work within that area? I do not know. Yes, you do. Because the question is whether we can approve an alteration or we can approve alteration yes. on some on town or land if it's possible. But the town has to 
put the proof. You send a letter yeah. and say we're, we're okay with this. Mm -hmm. well, if you're, yeah, if you're yeah. like to uh, approve the, the uh, wall, work on the wall, then condition it that we have to go to the town. It's really, it's a different thing. Uh, most roads down there are 33 feet wide or 40 feet wide. This thing is uh, 50 foot wide right away through, through that area. So there's nothing. There's from the edge of the pavement over, there's a good 15 to 20 feet in different locations that uh, other pieces of property around that, uh, within that right of way. Right. Penny? Well, I understand where this stuff is coming from, but I also know where she lives. And a lot of the houses on either side of her, they do have a manicure yard, but they've been like that for a long, long time. They've had the walls in front, I would say, before the Women's Protection Act came in, or before we got smarter and realized we live on the beach, deal with it. You know, you're not going to, the man manicure is gone and all that. That just is a fallacy on the beach, and I just really have issues that I'd love to see the site cleaned up. I think it can be a gorgeous site, but um, I just really have issues. I can, you can keep the wall you have, but I personally, I don't want it any higher. You're sending the water somewhere else if it gets higher. Um, this driveway, I have an issue with that because from what, when I was down there, that was pretty broken up, the whole thing, and um, Yes, you did have an existing driveway, but it's at the point now that it's, you can hardly call it a hard top driveway. Um, I like the plantings along the side. You definitely have to clean out all the rubbish that's there. And um, you do live on the beach, and I understand the name of the people across the street. Yeah, a big storm's coming right at you. So, more than likely, if a big storm comes, you're on the beach. It's the problem is coming. The ocean is coming. And um, it just isn't a good, good idea to start trying to fight Mother Nature when you're living on the beach. And um, it's almost like you're fighting a losing battle. Like I said, on the back side here, yeah, you could cover the concrete, but the first major northeaster is pro probably going to take the sand away. So. Um, I just, I don't know what to tell you. I just think um, you're looking to get something that, if you got it, I don't think it would last anyways, the manicured lawn and so forth and so on, because of where you live. But I'm, once again, like I said, I'm just one member, and we all have to decide where to go. Question, does does this have to be approved all, or can it be approved or disapproved item by item? Either or. I mean, we, we have an order of conditions that will produce, and those will outline what is and what can be done. And so the plans will go with it, and if there are changes that need to be done to the plans, then the plans would need to be changed so that we can submit them with the order of conditions. Okay. Sure. Um, are you done? For the moment. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. My only comments are, it, you know, it really bothers me to watch the commission be arbitrarily inconsistent. And, you know, in the last year, we've allowed a couple seawalls to be raised. We've had a couple that were completely torn down that have been replaced. And um, that's kind of my comment on the seawall. We've allowed people to do that. And, you know, this isn't even in the V zone. Um, as far as the driveway, we'd prefer to see pavers, but once again, you know, we just had somebody in here. It already is a paved driveway. We had someone in here last week that uh, repaved their driveway, and they're going to keep yeah. it. And we were upset with the contractor because he didn't file to do it. Um, and then, of course, I would defer to Jim on the, the concrete issue. In his opinion, I would go with on the... Uh, removing it, I guess. And the plantings all look good. Those are my comments. Well, I, I put
Paul hit on two of the issues that that I feel uh, I I understand the potential in inconsistencies. Uh, I personally don't think that there should be a paved driveway on on Hummer Rock. Um, just simply because it all is, for all intents and purposes, on a uh, in a V zone. Uh, it may not be by definition, but uh, eventually it will be. <laughs> eventually, it will be, yeah. Uh, and I, I think that uh, crushed stone or some kind of pervious uh, paving is is better. Um, as for the wall, um, if we were next to other properties, who, who owns the property south? They, there are paper streets on both sides, D Street and uh, C Street. They're 40 feet wide. There are easements? I don't, I'm sorry. Uh, paper streets. Mm -hmm. I, I have they just on paper county. They ne were never built. That's correct. Right. But I can show you the big plan. Well then. Oh, all right. Yeah. Uh, okay. And this will give you an idea. Yeah. No. I that I that. Um. So if one if one were to raise it, raise that that wall. Uh, for all intents and purposes, it wouldn't affect neighbors. Uh, uh, it would divert the water around. Potentially, it may even divert some of the cobble. Uh, both of which would be good for the site and wouldn't hurt anything else. Uh, so, I wouldn't mind raising the. Uh, uh, the wall in front of a small amount. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure against the garden. Uh, and as to the concrete out here, I'm whatever, whatever seems best. And I know that the you know, rules and rights uh, supersede a lot of what I'm talking about. But, uh, that's my own personal opinion. And uh, I guess I would, uh, I, I, I would take my, my orders from the regs. Otherwise, I feel strongly about, especially the, uh, the driver. Do you guys have anything to add before I go? Or? Not, not necessarily add, but I'll, I'll do my, my take as I I think the commission should continue its unwritten policy at the present time about permeable material and flood plates and on gravity beaches. I mean, should the people that vibrate and could be papers. Right. It's sort of the same smoothness as asphalt. I, I think that anything on very beach and flood plain, what I've seen last year, you've been fairly well consistent with new driveways being complete replacements of the requirement to be Permeable, some permeable material. So I would suggest the driver would follow that. I think that all the concrete should be removed. Some of the boulders that are embedded in the mark, I'm just summarizing them. There's four to five boulders that are embedded in the mark deeply. Leave those there, but I think all the concrete should be removed. If they want to stabilize the backside of the room with sand and vegetation, I think that's that's out there deeper. Really. And it's to their benefit and it would be very, very easy and very nice to be able to stabilize that with some sand and some new vegetation, some new cell tower vegetation. Uh, this little debris on the north side, um, that's just thrown there, that will be removed, that should be removed. It's, it's cut down the tree from the previous episode, strewn on the side of the dune there, that could be easily removed. I don't have, I don't really have an issue with the walkway. It looks like a small path really in the middle of the walkway. And uh, I'm, I'm a little on the fence with it, and I said this last time as well, on the, on the wall. Um, you are setting the precedent though. It's on a barrier beach, it's in a floodplain, it's in a zone, so theoretically you don't have moving water 
you obviously do not move the water because the problem goes all the way to the back side. I think you're setting the set the precedent you're gonna have to live with if you allow a lot of wall built bigger on a barrier beach when somebody else comes in and says, I want my wall bigger. We have done it so sea walls on the seaward side. I don't really see the, the desired need to raise it. I think a cap would be good. And number of four to six inch cap maybe on it to stabilize the top of it. I think that would be maybe a nice, nice compromise. Uh, I really don't, I'd be a little concerned about allowing it to be raised. A cap would rock a lot to be raised somewhat. That might be a decent compromise. And they did mention salt tolerant Cape Cod uh, grass mix, which don't just the salt tolerant version of the appropriate for the front lawn. And then the letter from the DPW, I know, I know this is in line with all the others that go along there, but they are on the road, on the public road. So I think a letter from the, from the DPW would suffice. And I, I would guess they would probably give that because it's never interfered with them yet. But I think to cover yourself, they are going on public yeah. property. That's my summary. Um. Just with the impervious surface driveway, I mean, there's lots of other options out there. You know, that can really get you almost the same thing. And I do because we're on the barrier beach, so forth. That's, I'm not a big fan of the impervious or asphalt driveways down there. And there may be some other houses out there that have asphalt driveways, but we got two show cars hearings on tonight. And, you know, we're in a similar area where asphalt came in that didn't have permits. So, it could be that they, you know, do, do they have a compound permit? I don't know. So I, I, I think she can get, you know, a good stabilized driveway in there without having the impervious thing where we have to go around this, you know, unwritten policy that we have, which is just common sense, really. And um, just that one, you know, the special condition that just that there is some sort of approval for this work, for approval of the plan would work within on the central lab, I say it may be that that has happened all the way in the past or whatever, but I don't know if, we, if the confirm has approved those, you know, alterations within central lab, but this one here is just to at least get a write off from somebody when they have found one of them they're okay with it. And we made a top off. Anybody in the audience? Can I uh, make uh, one more comment? Sorry, some big back there. What you had mentioned about the uh, the water going around, and again, what we tried to show with the profile is that in the past, when the materials would come up and they'd go across the road and they'd build up on her lawn, they'd, they'd go up there for a distance of 12, 13 feet, and that's the height of the proposed wall. Then how many ways did that take? Three, four, five ways? That's all she's trying to do is raise that thing up. In this instance, I don't think she's going to be bothered by the cobble any longer unless something's done out front. But she has a septic system that's between that wall. And if the water comes up and it starts to dig on out, then who knows, maybe it will go underneath the wall. I can't tell you how long the storm's going to last, but there is infrastructure going through there. You have the gas lines, you have the water lines, and you have other utility lines that you may be washing out. So I think you should take that into consideration also. So. May I just ask you one question? Sure. The septic systems across the street are right under those houses. The cobble gets washed away, the sand gets washed away. And Again, please don't let me sound like a wise guy. There aren't any septic systems out. All there are are concrete structures that water goes in and the water goes up. This is a full septic system that's in front of that house. Those things are covered flush with the ground. No, and some of those ground. actually, what was it, a year and a half ago, actually got uncovered with the scouring. No, I understand that. Yeah. But I'm saying, you know, it happens, you know. Right. No, he's just saying, though, it could get scoured, and they had yeah. some yeah. across the street. Yeah, no, I know that. Jennifer had to, they had to fix them quick. Right. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves here, though, yeah. to be honest with you, because we were here for originally for a cease and desist. Yes. Because there was a considerable amount of vegetation that was removed from the dune. The first thing that needs to be done is that needs to be 
fixed. I mean, and we can't cut down things on barrier beaches and on coastal dunes without a permit first. And then also, in this case, since there wasn't one, we need to have it fixed. So before any, in my, my opinion, before any walls are fixed, before any driveways, before any concrete walkways, we need the vegetation replanted. And this was submitted with your package. There's a considerable amount of green that was going around your property. It's gone now. It's, I mean, a good amount we'll of that is gone. To that so if it's gone or not. I'd like, I like your planting plan, and I have no problem with that, but it needs to be done. I, yeah, I mean, in some cases, right obviously, planting on top of the wall where you're going to remove concrete may not make sense, but along the side, I think it would go a long way to to have the plantings done before well, I can't we, we pass off on a whole plan to redo the whole entire lot. I can't do the planting along the dune though until I can get rid of the concrete. Right, which I which I said, and I understand. Um, but the planting down the side and the removal of the concrete in the backyard will get done right away. Well, you have something to say? Yeah, well, just a, um, something that Richard actually brought up, that we've got a number of items on this notice of intent application that's before us. I mean, a lot of times you just get built a new house or someone's gonna do one or two items. There's, there's quite a long list here. It could be that you, you know, issue an order of conditions for the project, but in each one of those make a decision. Say the, the impervious driveway that we're going against you from getting a better driveway there, but we wanted impervious material, you know, or permeable that it's going to allow them through, and you know, things like that, or the, the issue about removing the concrete, larger concrete, leaving in place or whatever, is it fine tuning so that the conditions so that you know, <coughs> this size piece can come up, but it's going to have to be done under the observation of the agents to make sure that the contract is only taken out be supposed to see. You could really, I, I don't think, I'm, what I'm hearing is, no one seems to be having a real problem with the planting part of the project, um, and you know, the, the, the Cape Cod grasses that they're cooking. It seems that what we're really talking about is the driveway, the wall, and uh, you know, the concrete which blocks on which comes up, and I think you can really write the order conditions here. Um, in terms of the wall, I'm not entirely positive that it isn't having an impact. Yeah. I noticed when I was on the site that the southern side, this would be the southern edge of your property, um, it seems as though the cobble has gone down that paper street and is going out into the marsh. And either when the docks are put out, people are driving on the marsh, or the cobble is getting washed down. So it's not that the wall is without impact. It is either one or two things. People are driving on the marsh to put floats out or the seawall is forcing the, your cobble wall is forcing, this would also, so this is the side where you're proposing the, the planting of the, um, yeah. the blueberry proposed yeah. cedar and pines, right? In your photographs that you brought today, you can look in this picture and see where down here yep. the mm -hmm. cobble is going out into the salt marsh. Right. That's an impact to the resource. I don't know how it's getting there or why, but... I think it's going right down the middle of that road from a, the, right across the street. So, but my wall would stop it. It's on both sides. Or of the push it around, push depending it around. on it which way the wind or you water is blowing. Down there you usually end up getting, I mean, I don't know if you've seen it, like three or four feet worth of cobble in front of that. Lots of times you can actually drive right off my wall and it goes straight across all the cobble. In so there's been plenty of times that the they're on it. The only place the cobble doesn't go on the mesh is in front of those six houses. Go in both directions. There isn't any mesh any longer. It's all covered with the cobble. What I noticed also was that your neighbor to the yeah. south has considerable beach grass and Rosa Rugusa going. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem to be impacted by the cobble at all. One of my neighbors down the street has salt grass and an yeah. incredibly beautiful lawn behind it. Mm -hmm. And this area gets washed over by Egypt Beach at least six times a year. And it floods and there's a giant puddle and seaweed mm -hmm. and 
cobble that end up and the house across the street has beach grass all up on it on a dune and it it seems every year to do fine it never really gets harmed so what's going on 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 this property that we end up with this if you go down to any rainstorm it's puddles right in front of that house my house for some reason i don't know the people next door across the street they all have sea walls on that side and on that side the there's only here four is, houses. There's no walls on these properties, and there's no walls near them forcing the water in any one direction. And I'm not saying that you have to take out your seawall. I'm just, I, I personally feel that that wall is having an impact beyond just a little bit of cobble piling up on it and tightening the road. So there are, I'm, and I, we're not okay. trying to engineer your problem. I'm just right. your project. I'm, I'm just saying mm-hmm. there are clear alternatives and they seem to work when we let mother nature do the thing. Uh, the only thing, like if you're sitting in front of my house, like right in front, if you look, all the houses to this side have seawalls in front of them and all the houses to this side have seawalls in front of them. The four houses that are right in front of me, none of them have seawalls. So their cobble comes straight across. Mm-hmm. So that's why the people next door, don't they don't get cobble on theirs because the people on the ocean have seawalls. But it's also house. washing down the paper street. That's why it comes to my house. But it's also going down the paper street too. Right. So it mm-hmm. goes away from their property and down the paper street. Um, I just I just don't want it to, my opinion is that the wall is having an impact. That's, I could show you. Whether it's 18 inches higher or not, I'm not entirely sure it makes a difference. It's the wall itself that I think is having an impact. Um, where that leaves us, I don't know. Obviously, you are not ripping out this, your wall. Do you need to fix it? I'm sure you do. It's falling apart. I've noticed that. It's clear that it's falling apart. Um, I think this gives the you and excellent opportunity to be forward thinking and take advantage of the mole that you're on and to work with what you have. And that is the opportunity to perhaps have doom, which would protect your house and would function naturally because there are tons of places on Hummer Rock where there's cobble, Rosa Ragusa, and beach grass all living together happy and doing their thing. And it doesn't seem to bother the Rosa Ragusa or the beach grass. So it's something to consider if you want to have an asphalt driveway you may be saying yeah well this is great we're taking some of it out and that's nice but at the same time maybe we're going to do something forward thinking and proactive that's going to benefit the area around us and also my property by protecting it with an appropriate structure that isn't concrete because it's not supposed to be there we know that now Um, that's all i have to say So I'm not sure how we want to handle it from here. Do we want to close it? I'm, I mean, we can do our own orders. We can do standard orders and then list the things and decide amongst us the majority, you know, nay, yay, on each item. I can, I can, I can do a draft order of conditions. Yeah. Have Carol email to you and then see what comments, what conditions Make you want to do. Yeah. Which one do you have? And I, That's your all right. Then and, then, and then you'll vote, around, vote on the final one. Of the next year. Yeah. I, d- I would just like to yeah, make no one problem. comment, uh, and it relates to, to your comment, Jim, about this being what we do with the, uh, 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 the uh, wall in front, setting a precedent. I believe the only precedent that it would set in, in my opinion, would be in those situations where you don't have any house on either side. Um, I don't believe this would set any kind of a precedent. From my standpoint, the way I look at it, um, if if there were houses on the on either side, if um, if the movement of cobble around this property or the movement of water around this property uh, were to have a dramatic impact, and I, I hear what Todd's saying, but if it were to have a dramatic impact on, on the two properties on either side, however we handled this would not be a precedent, in my opinion. And I just wanted that for the record, because um, I don't think it is a precedent. 
I mean, Todd said he thinks it has a problem. Todd thinks it has a problem, and that's a, that's another issue. But that's I was going to say, for example, on the for example on the north side where you see the wall curving in, when the when the overwash hits that, it's going to force the water in a certain direction. It's going to be water coming from the north from the other direction as well, and you're going to more than likely get some elevated level of water that would not be there if the wall were not there. Whether or not okay. it has a significant impact is is an unknown, but it is having an impact. I agree it would have an impact. Right. I agree Every man-made man structure on that barrier beach changes has an impact. Changes the flow pattern of right. the water. Yeah. Okay. So I make motion to close it? Um, if, if, the, uh, if the applicant wants to close. Well, I don't think we have any more close. information do you to give us. No. I don't think so, no. Well, we can see what we can do, I guess. Really? I make a motion to close. A uh, second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Uh, like, we have just a uh, couple of questions. Uh, yeah, hold on, let's see. Uh, please, can you give me this one? This one. Changing, we're only talking about 10 
15 feet at, the, at those areas. But that's those are the areas, and one of the areas, especially at A14, where our grass flag is, is I've got uh, swamp cabbage upland of it, of his flag, and there's an old John Richardson flag in the field, it, whether a wetland flag or the it, or, or it's upland point for where the wetlands stop, and that's pretty much right where the swamp cabbage stops. So that's the area we want to look at. So I, uh, you know, agree to think temporarily to get a meet uh, Greg out there. I think and Brad maybe Thursday at one o'clock. Thursday at one o'clock. So if we can just continue for two weeks, we should have the answer by then, and, and, and probably just you know, if there are any minor revisions to the plan, it would be done so that we get to you know, act on this two weeks from today. Then I'll make a motion to continue until August 13th at 6.40. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Kylie, 25 River Street. <coughs> Um, this is a continuation of the hearing of two weeks ago, uh, at which time the uh, my client expressed an interest in trying to save the apple tree. Uh, so I moved the system of about five feet further to the south and slightly closer to the street in an effort to do that. Um, there, will, there will be some um, lost uh, bayberry and uh, rosa vergosa, which can be replanted in another area. Um, it's a very small uh, portion of that, of those plantings. So we propose to do that. Do you submit another plan with the septic being moved over? Yes. Yeah, I do. Oh, oh okay, so you guys have it. In the sea of water health, do you have water health? I don't know. No? No. I don't know what you're doing. Do you need a direction to the floor plan? What's a floor plan? I don't know. Need what? Correct them and the floor plan. No, she never notified me of any of them. She's on vacation this week. Oh, yeah. That's right. She was vacation. She couldn't find it for a long time. What's the date of your revised of, the, revi of the revised plan? What's the date on it? Because all I all this I have the new one. This is the old one. Yeah. Yeah. Jim, Jim has it in the office. Oh, okay. No, I did okay. not submit. Uh, That's all you copies or copies. That's not having been there last week, uh, last time this. Okay. You simply just say that the tree got the all the line, just slid over here. Okay, so we still have to wait for the board to help. Mm -hmm. I'll make a motion to continue until the 13th. Second, second. All those in favor? Aye. Uh, so there'll be a quick one. We can get the board to help. Well, Mrs. Kelly won't be happy, but. Well. <sighs> Everybody needs a vacation you know, sometimes. The cesspool Can this is, be is one of those really severely overflowing. Yeah, we could, couldn't well, we have the yeah, orders ready? We have the orders, if orders it, ready. Right, because it's... Yeah, but we've already we want to be sure it. we get the board of health. Right, but I'm once... I'm not real happy what happened somewhere else, so I'd like to start making sure the board of health is in before we close. Right. I don't want to do that anymore. Can you pump that and be done? Pardon me? You said the cesspool... Really, really bad. Well, I guess you can always get it pumped. Well, it's going to take obviously a while to construct for the system, so maybe two weeks to get that, especially when you're in summer usage. You know. Well, she lives there all year round. It's just she's there by herself, I guess, as far as I know. Well, I, I would think if she gets it pumped, that's going to take it to the time when we can get the new one. Yeah, more, more than likely, yeah. Okay. Well, we, you know, if we have the order ready for the next year. Yeah. Right. So, so it would be the same so as the closing. Yeah, well, we'll see. So, see, so you're all set to go. We just have to wait for the out. Okay. 
and I, like I said, I'm uncomfortable. Personally, I don't know about the rest of you. No, we've had no. Well, just like you said, we're not going to cost them any time. It's going to no, be it just isn't. like it closed tonight because next meeting will have the yeah. orders. All right, so I make a motion to continue to eight thirteen. Second. What time? Oh, at eight fifty. Um, six fifty. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Are you here for Kennedy? Yes. Okay. Uh, on July 30th, 2012, at 6.55 p.m. in the Town Hall, the Sixwood Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under Chapter 131, Section 40 of Bylaws regarding the application of Elizabeth Kennedy to build an exterior handicap lift on property located at 3 Milton Street, Hummerock. Abutters and other interested parties are in invited to attend. Uh, my name is Robert Crawford, representing uh, Kennedy's. Um, this lot is on the northerly side of Milton Street, just east of River Street. Um, there's a, a house that was built, I believe, approximately eight years ago, built on a son of two posts with, um, f with uh, cement fo concrete footings. And the n property was recently sold, and the new owner um, is in need of um, an elevator in order to get to the upper floors. Um, so we're proposing to build this as an exterior elevator, exterior to the house, but in the area of, of the uh, existing deck to the rear of the house in the northeast corner. And um, it's necessary to revise the leaching area. Uh, to compensate for the lost leaching, we're proposing to widen it out in another area to the east. Um, I went over this with Jennifer. I hope she responded with some sort of an approval letter. Uh, no. No. Okay. Um, anyway, the, uh, the, the, the work that will be done in the ground is the construction of a slab about five feet by five feet, and portions of the deck will have to be removed uh, in order to do that and put back in the area outside of the uh, elevator. Um, in addition, as I said, there's about a two foot by 16 to 17 foot um, area of crushed stone uh, that will have to be put in uh, east of that. The construction is within the outer riparian zone of the uh, South River and it's approximately 1% of the lot area that is affected. It's also in an AO flood zone, depth two feet. Try to answer any questions you have. Okay. No, I don't have any questions. Mm. No. I was nope. there yesterday. No questions. I are happy. Uh, I just was wondering about when you do the actual construction and it says here that care shall be taken so as to not adversely affect existing leaching chamber? Do you pump it first or is it empty or how do you? I would, I would expect it to be empty. Uh, um, the area that we're, we're dealing with is just the stone anyway. Okay. But obviously the, the chambers in there are, uh, are, are plastic and you know, if you went in there with a backhoe and started whipping the thing around, it's possible you could damage them. Um, that's the purpose of the note, so that that doesn't happen. But you do have to get Jennifer's approval on that. Yep. Yes. Well, I, I thought I had her approval. Apparently, she didn't respond with a letter to the commission. Right. I know it's a small area of disturbance, but I just wanted to get Jim's input on whether there should be any erosion controls or conditions about what happens to the dirt when it's dug out or whether or not if this is outside of the building the elevator yeah. yes and whether or not a continuing condition should be with it that it be removed if this resident move out 
because if it goes into disrepair and it's just hanging out on the back of the building, it could get blown off in the storm. I, I mean, I'm not saying no. I'm just I'm curious mostly. I don't think we can do that. No. Okay. Because it's and the owner's only good for three years for the construction, and I think it'd be hard for us to just to have that put on the <laughs> Right. This would be permanent. Part I was of the structure on the slab. Yeah. yeah. It's permanent enough. And it's on, it's, on the in, it's on the interior part of the deck. It's not on the outside right. of the deck. It's, they're actually cutting a hole in the deck and up the against deck. the house. Correct. And there's a large deck around it, so I don't really see any impact on it. Anybody in the audience? I'm in the bottom. And your name? My name is Andrea L. Walker. I live at 6 Newton Street in Home Rock, Mass. And my back door looks directly out at the back of that property. <clears throat> and I am concerned about the permanency of the elevator, as you have just raised, whether you can make that ruling or not. I think that's a concern about uh, any kind of deterioration of that based on uh, what happens to the owners of that house or if they sell that property. And more importantly than that, that house just sold in June. My question is, why would anybody, knowing that that house is a three-level house with the living area primarily on the top floor for the benefit of the view, select that type of a home without doing some type of due diligence prior to that about <coughs> the, the uh, capability of a house like that taking an elevator or whether it's suitable for the property? I'm not at all opposed to anything that has to do with handicap, but there is clearly uh, many options for indoor interior elevation for somebody who is handicapped. Uh, I, I'm sorry, honestly, I have to stop you. I asked the agent who's pretty much locally known as an expert on coastal barrier beaches and his impression was that there wasn't going to be an impact to the resource and that's the only thing that we have jurisdiction over. Well, we don't care what it looks like. It so doesn't matter. So if you approve it, where does it go next? They build it. Build it's the impact. Well, the building inspector. Well, they have to get, get the building, building, the building permit. They have to get a building yeah. permit. Yeah. Yeah. And also yeah. Jennifer from Board of Health has to approve you the work to by the same day. It's only the impact to the resource area that is under our jurisdiction. And yeah. so. anyone else? So okay. Well, we can't close once again. We will continue it. We have the orders ready. Mm -hmm. We're waiting for four. Okay. So I think you need a number too, don't you? Oh, you don't have a number. I don't think so. Do we, Joe? Uh, I don't know. I don't have the file. Well, usually I get an email from the state and I didn't get one. Okay, so we're waiting for both of those. So we will so. continue this until August 13th at 7 o'clock. So you didn't call us? No, I, get, I look at them on email, but oh, I don't okay. really remember, Bob. Okay. Sorry. Well, okay. <laughs> Um, somebody want to second that one? No second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. So, uh, 7 p.m. the show cause here in Pilgrim Paving. 68 and 81 Oceanside Drive. They called and could not make it. They called and talked to Carol. I returned the call back to them and had to be seen for return call from them. But they called earlier and said they couldn't make it. So, so continue it for two weeks. Put them on the next <laughs> right. we'll Did they ever call you back, Jim? I'm not sure. Not when I was there. No, this afternoon. Oh. Remember you called I them called, and asked yeah, them. I called and left the message. Uh, mm -hmm. No. Right. We'll put it on, you know, we'll continue yeah. it if, they, if there's no, a no-show the next time, we'll, we'll talk about further action. Mm -hmm. okay. Have a motion? I don't think you have to make a motion for show close, do you? Oh, okay. No. no. Yeah. Well, there's others. Moved along. Yeah. 
720 or I don't Ooh, know. Oh, it is a shortcut. Okay. So it's on July 30th, 2012 at 720 p.m. in the town hall. The Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing on, under Chapter 131, Section 40 of the Massachusetts General Bylaws and Section 3070, 30,700 of the Town of Situate Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Mark Winchester Diamond Development to raise and rebuild a dwelling and septic on property located at Lot 1, 159 Pollock Street, Situate. Abutters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Outside the 50 foot buffer here, one here is outside the 50 foot buffer, and the other 
three systems would be just inside the typical cover. This line you see here, colored in purple, this, this would be the limit of activity for people who would live in the house. Um, John Zimmer is going to explain to the commission where all the shaded areas mean and the uh, proposed um, enhancement and amenitation that will occur in the shaded areas. This is the cesspool I pointed out earlier, which is about 35 feet for a wetland. That, that, that will be abandoned in accordance with Title V. Um, did, did you read the public paragraph? I only one? read on lot one, so do you, I'll read lot two if that's okay with everybody else. If we talk about lot two, okay, I've been, I've been thinking about that. read lot two? Yes. <laughs> on July 30th, 2012 at 7.20 p.m. in the town hall, the Situate Conservation Commission will hold a wetlands hearing under chap chapter 131, section 40 of the Massachusetts General Laws and section 30,700 of the Town of Situate Code of Bylaws regarding the application of Mark Winchester Diamond Development to build a new dwelling and septic on property located at Lot 2, Hollett Street, Situate. The butters and other interested parties are invited to attend. Okay, thank you. Um, this is uh, Lot number 2, Lot 1 is used north of it, which uh, directly abuts it, that's what we were just talked about. The work on this slide is similar in nature and that the septic system is in the front yard, which is um, completely outside the 100 foot bucket zone, which is this one here. Um, a small portion of the house is inside the 100 foot bucket zone. The recharge um, uh, units of the stormwater are uh, between 50 and 100 feet. In this is the 50 foot buffer zone one here. Um, even though you, even though some work is allowed between 50 and 100 feet, the shaded area is this area that the applicant is proposing to restrict for, the, uh, for anyone who would um, live here in the future. And this area here will also be enhanced and amended. Uh, and John Azuma is going to explain what those um, uh, proposed enhancements are. And then this, this area here, that flows a lot, um, one which is above it. Uh, and that here, uh, the proposed green area, to make the requirement that we uh, cover over the, the uh, the the um, stormwater, uh, and the the for these um, two left, uh, the site in general slopes from Hollis Street back to the rear of the property, which is owned by the town of Situate. Um, that's the land that they took back from the 80s for a well field. Um, the drainage on Hollow Street all flows in a northern direction. Uh, none of the runoff from the street enters into the site. The site is actually a little bit higher with the street line. So the line actually comes up and then slopes down uh, entirely from the front to the back. So. For that, I'll end my presentation and I'll come up to John and he can explain the proposed enhancements and our mitigations for the two lots. Thanks, Paul. Again, for the record, my name is John Zimmer with South River Environmental. Um, have any of you folks been able to get out to the site and take a look at it? Yeah. Okay, great. Um, so I'll, I'll describe a little bit about the existing conditions and I'll discuss uh, what's being proposed for mitigations to work within the um, right now, the existing rear of the property uh, is pr pretty well disturbed. Um, what I noticed when I was out doing the field work, doing the delineation, checking the soils at the back, is that there appears to have been historic disturbance further within, basically almost up to the wetland line. Um, there's a pretty significant berm that uh, comes in on. Coming in this way along the wetland line, um, there is not a lot of topsoil. Uh, it basically goes right down to the A layer. Uh, there's not a lot of organic material. There's evidence of a burn. As you get further back, uh, around the backside of lot one, there's evidence of pavement dumping. Um, there's significant debris. There are not a lot of large diameter trees back in here, which also uh, gives me some indication that at one time this area was probably cleared within the last you know, 40 years or so. Um, and then within the buffer zone itself, it's been colonized predominantly by invasive species. Uh, there's honeysuckle, there's a significant amount of multiflora rose in there. 
Um, all of these are, are aggressive species that decrease the habitat value. Um, the PBW itself, from here back, it is actually functioning pretty well. It's got pretty good diversity of plant species in there. Um, and then it continues back uh, the perennial stream several hundred feet back this way. Um, so when the proposed work on lot one is approximately 1,400 square feet within the inner 50 foot, which is right up in this area. This area all has evidence of, of prior disturbance, um, similar types of plant species composition. Um, so what we're proposing to mitigate or offset for, for this 1,400 square feet um, is 1,400 square feet of enhancement within the inner 50 here. Uh, and this would be basically removing as much of the invasive species as we can. Uh, we're going to be replanting species that are more wildlife friendly, you know, such as gray birch, red maple, highbush blueberry. I chose species that were facultative. Um, so you know, the area down here, they did have some facultative wetland plants uh, along the margin. So I, I felt that, that by putting in some more facultative species rather than straight upland species, uh, may provide a, a little better diversity uh, and a little better um, softer edge from the from the BW boundary back into the upland. In addition to that 1,400 square feet, there is 800 square feet of buffer zone restoration. This is the portion of the lot where the existing cesspool is. Uh, there's existing disturbance and debris all around it. So all of that would be removed uh, basically down to the, uh, the soil layer. If necessary, we bring in some organic soil and again, replant that with native species. Um, so those two are the main mitigation measures on lot one. In addition to that, there's approximately 2,000 square feet of area, the majority of it is on lot two. And this area extends, it's basically outside of the inner 50 foot. And this area would be, again, restored, debris removed, invasive species taken out, replanted, and then permanently protected. So that would give you know, upwards of a 70 to 75 foot buffer on lot two down to the BW boundary. Um, in devising this plan, we wanted to do something that would enhance the and restore the existing disturbed buffer and also provide some better wildlife habitat value. Um, at, at the end of the day, it's my opinion that the work within the 50 foot on lot one would not result in an adverse impact on the ability of the BBW to protect the interests of the bylaw or the act. But by providing the mitigation and enhancing the buffer zone, we would perhaps be providing some additional wildlife habitat value uh, perhaps improving some of the permeability of the soils and then also some of the location uh, as well. Um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. I'd be happy to answer questions on the mitigation. Thank you, Penny. Any questions? Well, I'm sorry. I do have questions. I I need this thing. I need this thing. I mean, it's a very sensitive area. Sure. Yeah. And, and Paul, you can correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that that's one of the reasons why we're we're situating the septic systems closer to the road. I mean, we could situate the septic systems behind the houses and move the houses up, but I'm not sure that we want to put the, the septic systems closer to the resource area than they need. Yeah, I, this, I know, I, I did have one question, and it might be for Stephen, but that pat, patio out back, that's not going to be poured concrete or something that's going to be paved. Yeah, or something. Paved. Yeah. Yeah, those are uh, pervious pavers. I know, but it doesn't, it just says stone. It just says pat, that, that could be conditioned as yeah. well as being. I mean, stone could be flagstone with cement <laughs> in between, you know, um, that. They'll have a crushed, crushed stone bed underneath them and be put in that way so they wouldn't be uh, impervious. They would be pervious. Um, I would say, 
touching on the septic again, I, I think it's a, good, a better idea to put it in the front. A lot of times we just look at the structure and yeah. say, get it away yeah. from the buffer zone. Well, we, I think it's a real good idea to get yeah. the septic as far away as you can because it's very wet behind there. Right. If you go right. out there, it's all marsh. I mean, it's, it gets really lovely. It seems to me that you're sort of cutting off your nose to spite your face a little bit on the on the two properties because two the 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 way the flow is currently two goes into one and it goes right into the house at least as far as the topogs are concerned um, and I, I think you've got to have maybe this is part of your stormwater um, assessment but uh, uh, if you're the the way it looks to me is that that it just runs the water runs this way um, what would that be east to east um, with a little of it going down or a lesser amount going down into the aquifer down here but mostly going down into the aquifer this way which would put the water all across um, uh, lot one. The um, way the site is graded, these, these blue areas you see are the recharge units. Each lot has to stand alone as far as the storm. Uh, yeah, that's my point. Right, so what we've done is to capture the runoff from the roofs and some of the surface water so we don't have an increase in the volume of water that would run out from the back of the property. <coughs> Um, when you compare it between the existing and the proposed conditions. Again, we have three separate recharge units, and those are sized on the uh, volume of water that we need to uh, collect and contain the recharge into the ground so we don't exceed the threshold of having any increase in volume of water that would uh, leave the site at the, at the rear property line. And we are doing all of that between the 1500 foot buffer on lot two and lot uh, one. Um, but the site is graded to bring the water down into this area. There's a large existing open bridge this year, which the town has right now, which picks up the water coming from offside into a brand man hole and exits out into a 10 to 15 inch pipe right here. Then there's a large open channel in here. The, the pipe actually um, um, outlets the water down into like an existing punch pool. The pipe's about that far above the ground. And from there, it, it's just a um, excavated uh, trench or open ditch, if you will, from, from this point all the way down to the rear of the property. This, this line here is the town property goes from here back. Um, but again, the site is graded, so the runoff stays on the property. Um, it can't flow onto the abutting properties. Um, that's a pretty standard law in the uh, engineering design threshold that we have to meet. Lot one and two, um, again, do stand alone. The um, grade is such that the runoff would, would be captured from the roof. Uh, some of the runoff is captured by the extremers here to pick up any increase in volume. And on lot one, um, we're doing the same here. These units pick up the roof runoff, and these units pick up any additional runoff that will come off of the site. So it's going to go after two does. Yeah, so we don't have an increase in volume um, with, with the rear property line. Um, Excuse me, Mr. Mayor. But if the site does flow from Howard Street straight back or due east, pretty much. This is the North Arrow. I mean, the contours show that. The water flows at 90 degrees of the contours. These existing contours here, it's coming around here. Well, my, my issue is, is more with two than it is with one. So if you could go back to that. Um, because if you just look at the gradients here on the uh, on the northeast side, um, the gradients all flow into lot one. Up here? Yeah, all of these gradients here. Yeah. What what we have here is a swale on the property. You see the contours coming up and looking back, and they're here, and one here, and here. Those, 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 that's a proposed swale 
that keeps the water on lot one and takes it down into a three shot chamber. It's those um, inverted U shaped contours you see here, and we have them on this side. You can see them a little bit better over here. They move, that, that means the water is going to flow right down this path. It stays on this lot and away from the abundance. I'm not so worried about, the, uh, about that south side. But, uh, I mean, if you look at, just look at the gradients on the northeast side, you've got 27, 26. I don't see a swale. It goes 26, 25, 24, a little below. There's a swale here. It doesn't, I mean. It, it, here's the swale here. You see 26 comes up and loops around. You can see it better on, is this the north of the plan you have? I mean, it just goes bloop. No, no, it doesn't. Actually, what's it? This 26 is coming up. It's coming around like this, and it's going back. You see the 20, the 26. And you got your 25, 25, 26 goes right 26. down there. Which which one are you looking at? I mean, this oh, is oh, this oh. is two. That's one. You got? Can you get the notice on the template? You can see it better on that one. Oh. You got four or five in there. Yep. Two lot ones. So those both lot one. That's all lot one too. I think someone needed a whole stormwater project. Yeah, that may be too. Here, uh, I guess. Here, this one. Yeah. There's 26 coming up. Yeah. It comes up to here and then it comes it goes back. back down. It's coming back. That 24 is existing. The 26 and there's is another back. 26 over there. Yeah. It's coming back here and it's coming back up. To come up back up to the street. And you got 25 comes up, it comes around. You've got a swell going down and a swell going down. And this is the boundary line here? The bond, um, yes. So it's That's right right on the property yeah. line. And, and we typically put them along the property just like we do on this side here. Yeah. The reason we do that is you can't shed water on the abutters property. So anything that wants to go this way, when you get near the property line, you put the swell along the property line to divert it away from the abutter lots. Seems to me, I mean, you're just running the water right, right down through there. I, 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 I. What happens is, this is the lot line here. You've got the swell in here coming down on this side, and you have some of this water coming. No, you don't, because I mean, this goes straight across. These go. You, you're not showing any. But you got these swells in here. Well, there's that's a, not enough. There's a swell on, coming right down through here, and what it's doing is, this is a low area. Right across the top of the septic? No, no. These are your recharge septics units to capture the septics up front. The reserve area and the reserve area. What, what okay. this is is like a little pooling area on top of the recharge unit. The surface water is going to come down here and it's going to get into this inlet. There's an inlet right here. Yeah. So the water would come down through the swale. It's all graded to get into this this area here. This, this is a... Um, like an open grate that's lower in elevation of this contour, but everything's graded to direct water down to here. These these units are sized to take a certain volume of water, as these are here. So what happens is the water's coming down this side of the property. It's going to get into these, and the one over here, this one's going to get all the uh, roof leaders and brings it into here. And this this one here, and this one here is going to pick up the runoff from the yard to the point where we. Um, don't have an increase in volume of water leaving the site. The water gets from here is going to be recharged based upon the soils. So what's inside of those chambers? Because I noticed that there's a bunch of these four inch PVC inlet overflow surface grates. Right. And yeah. they all lead to the stormwater management. What's in there? Is it a gravel it's hole or is it a big no, chambers. There's a, a set of detail sheets with it. Stormwater permit has a number of sheets with details on it that 
It's the same infiltrated yeah. chamber that you'd use for a septic system. Okay, I mean, that's what so there's, a I was there's a volume inside there. Right, that meets the stormwater management plan. Actually, on lot one, where we have an existing house, that system we could have designed just for the additional garage area, but instead, to get some overkill, we started from scratch and just figured it was going to be a whole brand new house. So even though the regulation doesn't call for us to have a full system there, it, it's only got to be for the increase in impervious area. We did it for the whole lot one and lot two. So we had the room to do it, and there's great soils out there. We dug nine test holes. Eight of the nine test holes were less than two minutes an inch. So it's beautiful gravel out there. Um, so the systems that are in there should be more than adequate to handle that water. That's why I didn't find it. Tony, hopefully you got that. There is a swale right down each of the side of the property lines. Yeah, that will keep it. I mean, the, the intent is to keep the water from each particular lot basically going straight back along the lot lines, right. but on our property until it gets back into the buffer zone area. And hopefully that water will help enhance that buffer. And as well. we have calculations that indicate that those are sufficient. Yeah, swale, swale's a swale. I mean, the storm well, water. The yeah, storm but a swale water, can be deep or shallow. But but the 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 swales are for surface runoff, not necessarily for the stormwater permit. Stormwater permit is the infiltrators and the amount of water that's different on there. So we're keeping the same basic tr uh, paths for the water in there, yeah. within each particular lot. Okay. That's 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 the important thing as far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah, me too. Those will show up on the ESBO plans, the swales, because we have to do that as part of the uh, project. That in some sort of uh, a way of keeping people out of the. Uh, well, you're you're on two. You're right up to the fifty. Um, no, on two we're away from the fifty. Well, you're, yeah, you're you're working away from the fifty. Yeah. Two, we're actually giving back the area outside the fifty as a non-disturbing zone. That's what that. Uh, I think it was yeah. two thousand square feet. That's that's an area that we could have potential lawn area, but we're going to mitigate for work on the other lot as well as this lot with that additional planting in that area. The only thing that doesn't show on this particular plan um, that's of importance because we've indicated to this to the neighbors as well, um, the town's drainage swale that they have over there. Um, number one, the pipe that the town has is not located within the 10-foot easement that was sold to them decades ago. They missed it when they installed it. Um, we're receptive to working with the DPW to either grant them a larger area for that pipe, so if they have to repair it, they'll have the ability without any type of a fight from a future owner. As well as if you've been down in there, and I think Todd, you went all the way down into where that drainage ditch was. Mm -hmm. Okay, it, it looks like you're, you know, in the middle of some Amazon somewhere. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it's a, um, it's not the safest spot that we can see on the site. And when the town um, put that drain in there, they neglected to put in a head wall and they didn't put in any safety features for any kids that might crawl up inside that pipe. It is a 24 inch pipe and it goes up about 110 feet and goes into a manhole on the edge of Hollett Street. If anybody were ever to get into that, they may never be found. Mm -hmm. um, so one of the things, we, we did commit to work with DPW to make an upgrade on that. Um, they just couldn't work with us fast enough for the, this particular order, but we would be very happy if you wanted to add an order that said that we would continue to work with DPW to address that condition. And I know the neighbors have some concerns and I've told them it absolutely will be taken care of. Um, we can either amend this particular order or do a separate order specifically for the drain. But it would be our intent to probably take that drain maybe either just outside the 50 or just into the 50 and put a little stone plunge pool in there to get rid of that gravel area that's out there right now and surface over that to make it a safer situation. Um, so we are committed to do that. I want to just go on the record as saying that as a proponent for the project that we are committed to work with DPW to do that as well. Does anybody else have questions about the stormwater men on the board here or the agents? 
Are you are you guys finished with your presentation? Because you were you did the mitigation, the stormwater, and the layout. Let me just make one more comment before we are done. Um, Carol will be receiving a plan that has a lot line change on it because we wanted to have a little bit more square footage of upland on each of these lots. And we were in process of buying some land from the Finnegans who are part of the, the ANRAD that we did. And we basically were buying a little bit more land from them. So it's not really relevant to the commission, the square footage, the work is exactly the same, but the, f the final plan will have a revision date of July 27th, provided there's no more revisions, that will indicate that lot line change and there's a little bit more square footage that you'll see on each lot. That's about it. Which reminds me, I think, didn't, wasn't there an issue about the lot line um, between this and, and one of your uh, abutters? Yes. That was not. Or it's right. we actually not certifying meat yeah, somehow. No, I understand that, yeah. but I'm asking if it was cleaned up, cleared up. We, we have gone to the planning board. We filed the, the um, uh, A&R plan with the planning board for the perimeter of the property. Um, there was some discussion regarding what the discrepancy is in a bearing on a plan, again, which is really in the planning board's purview. And Mr. Marabito, the... the uh, Surveyor signed and stamped the plan, and the planning board endorsed the plan last Thursday night. So, there is there an issue with some old plans that were out there? There's an issue with some old plans, but we don't believe it affects this particular piece of property. Um, I have one question. When do you think you would be starting the work? As soon as the commission allows us to do that. I mean, if it was something where you wanted to see planting done first to get mitigation in place, We'd be happy to do that if we can hit the season. I mean, it would be up to John and Paul and maybe Jim um, as far as how we can do these mitigation plantings. I have no problem while we control the property doing the plantings before anything else happens, if that's how the project is conditioned. That's my issue, honestly, is because there's a lot of disturbance in different forms to the buffer zones. And so to have this done as soon as possible, given that in the fall, I think these would be good time to be planting based, um, based on the timing of the order it would probably be perfect if, if the work was started late August early September yep. then they could go in you know do the work that needs to be done back here plant it in September which is a perfect time to do it and then you know set your no disturbance buffer with your erosion controls and then start the regular site work I think that would do um, I, I noticed on in the actual um, NOI that there shows the zone AE off on the back corner of the property. Um, I would love to see your facultative species more towards the zone of the flooding to uh, as the f levels of water rise that area down there in the wetland is going to want to move up upland and so to have the facultative species closer to where the the actual flood zone is I mean and I, I may be off mark and our agents can maybe address that but it just seems to me that the more wetland species towards that area where the flooding would come from because I think that's where the marsh is going to come from right I, I think that that one of the reasons we didn't put the individual plant locations on there was to do exactly that you know make a field-based call where to put say high bush blueberry which are a fact wet plant versus gray birch which is more of a fact or the pines so we could certainly do that yeah, a, a lot of this area, again, is outside the 50, where we're doing a lot of the plantings. Mm -hmm. So we could certainly start at the base of the shaded area. If you wanted us to go, again, on lot two, because that, quote, 50-foot buffer on lot two, when you go into that area, if you would prefer that we clean some more of that and scatter the plants throughout that area as well, we can do that and pick up more square footage. We just figured on that lot we had the ability to stay outside the 50 completely Again, leaving it up to the discretion of the commission, there, there's the trees that are out there are actually getting completely choked by vines. And if you were out there, mm -hmm. the, the, the gentleman who owns it now is very elderly. Um, and I think he and his son or friend went out and cut the vines off to try and save the trees. Yeah. Yeah. We love the opportunity to have some type of condition that would allow us to clear the vines off the trees if we can, as best we can. That'd be great because, again, they're just going to live that much longer if we can go into that area and do that work. We'd love it. 
I know, so, I know on the other side, there's another neighbor that's going to look for the same thing, and he's watching what's happening tonight, but his trees are also getting choked out by those vines. I know you've heard me say it before, I'm just not a huge proponent of going into the buffer and fixing it up because it, it's doing what it's doing. It, and again, if, this, if it wasn't all invasive species in this particular buffer, Which if there was good bushes in there, yeah. it'd be a different story. But the one thing we have here is we actually have the real ability to create a great buffer. Mm -hmm. And yes, some of it's a little less than 50 feet, some of it's more than 50 feet, but the vegetation is horrible, and we can replace that with something that'll really be better in the future. And you're putting a fence too. Yeah, yeah. So we'll delineate it so okay. that, uh, and we'll put the yeah, signs if you have. condition the signs as well, right on the fence. Everybody on the board is, yeah. Yeah. and we want to hear from Jim. Jim. First. Okay. Jim I'm, I'm okay with all that. And, you know, I, I like your concern about the 50 foot buffer. I think we, we, we've seen that too many times. People are approaching the buffer. There's a yeah, lot of invasive right. species. I don't think there's a lot you're going to find in in, any, in this vicinity that doesn't have some type of invasive. I think it's an argument that you're going to have every single time. So I think you've got to stop being careful. I know we need to eradicate the invasives, but I think every lot of situation not the surrounding towns have the invasives. I do, I, you know, I, I, I'm quiet because I think the trade-off between enhancing beyond the 50-foot buffer and compensation for this sort of balance, balances out my concerns about putting uh, particularly structures, even if it's a permeable paved patio in the 50 foot buffer, it's something we should try to move out of the buffer. But I think the enhancements that they're proposing are in the stormwater management, I think, sort of balances all that out. Uh, one thing that came up actually early in the hearing is like the position of the house and the septic systems. In the old days, you tried to get the house as far away from the wetland edge as possible, and you had septic systems right on top of the wetland. <laughs> Those days are gone. The number one thing is get that septic system reaching as far away as, far away as possible, and, and, you know, and the house going in. So I think by doing that, that's eliminating a impact to the wetland system, and also getting rid of the old cesspools, which are you know, really close to the wetland edge. And in the existing house. And to do the plantings within the 50 foot buffer zone, once you do that, is the um, wastewater from the septic system in front is working its way through the groundwater system. You're adding in new plants that are going to be actually pulling up and treating it. So it's net net will be cleaner than what we have out there now. Yeah, I'm John Whitaker, I'm the partner director to the South. But I'm like John is with me. Um, if uh, I would not be terribly concerned about any of this except for a very big factor, and that is this is a major, major stone drainage system that empties out onto this property. And it runs approximately a quarter mile across this property under Hollett Street, under Country Way, through land that used to belong to a family named Molinari for several hundred feet uphill. And it ultimately drains the roads that are the Creel and Circle development up there. There actually, that system incorporates two systems. There's a very old seasonal work that goes back to the beginnings of this town that used to run down across Molinari's on the Country Way, on the Hollett Street. I've seen it as far back uh, on maps as 1903. I've seen it in the deeds in 1696. That was folded in about 1967-68 into the modern drainage system that's there now. It was built by the developer who built the Creel and Circle Streets, then transferred into ownership and control of the town about 1971. The town owns it. Um, my concern is that every journey I take and a lot of you take runs through the intersection of Hollis and Way. I used to be on the advisory committee. I can remember when we walked the building about you. Eventually, I understand that work on the line. This thing is dumping out into it. Recently, within the past five years, that entire drainage system failed. Um, if you travel up country, you'll remember that every large rainstorm, a huge flood developed right in front of what was the Molinari property at the intersection of the country way. Town engineer tells me what happened was the some 40 year old drainage system collapsed. And Mother Nature began to reassert the eons old brook that was coming down. You had surface water and we, the surface began to cut through its old channel and made a whole mess. And frankly, started pumping through the old culprits right in the driveway. 
The whole point of this is I would be a lot happier as an abutter, as a citizen, as someone who used to be engaged in town government, to see that the public works is somehow being brought into the loop. I've been to a couple of this committee's meetings, I've been to the planning board meetings, I've been around town. I don't see the professional staffs of the public works department, the water department, the professional staff, the town planner, collaborating to say, okay, what exactly is the story with this drainage system? Oh, well, What's well, its yeah. future? Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not saying this is the responsibility of these people. I think it's the responsibility of Situate, and particularly you folks with the professional staff. I wonder what you've done, and whether you might want to bring the director of public works in here before you sign off on this, so you really understand what's going to happen in the next decades, the next century, to that drainage system. That's all I have to say. But I, the drainage going into that system, though, <clears throat> is separate from these projects, because with the stormwater permit, the whole point of having stormwater permit is to try to Take a, if you look at DEP regulations, you need to have a subdivision of you know uh, four houses or greater before they really start getting into stormwater calculation and so forth. We Sidgwick's gone a step further where they've adapted something that you know similar to what Cohasset has that individual residential homes coming in now have to propose stormwater mitigation to control things within that lot. So nothing's getting added in to the existing drainage system you're talking about. And, and I agree, there's, there's problems there, but it's really separate from this because everything's coming down from the subdivisions up above, draining down to that one low point. But it's really kind of separate from these proposals. I think the town needs to look at that. You know, that's exactly what I'm saying. Well, you're not saying, well, we don't have to look at that. No, no, no. Because that's what I heard the point of it. No, no, no. Guys in collecting begin to I agree, but we'll you're right. It's not the storm water on this correct. Lot. Okay. Right, it's, it's not this property. They're dealing with their own water. Feet away from the lot line, yeah. huge. And it's always going to be there, and every so many decades, it's going to collapse in the construction. What does that imply in terms of what your board is concerned about, what works is concerned about, and plan? Well, if it did happen that they were going to fix those that stormwater system yeah. because of where it drained, it would come under our jurisdiction. But until that time, it's really not our purview. This property is taking care of its stormwater and managing it on itself. And so what happens upstream from there, if that culvert's undersized and the rainfalls exceed our expectations and it blows out, that's not really their... Major structure that, I understand that, but we don't have the authority to address that. That's here. the problem, I think. We, we would be the most impacted. Well, we do and that, and Mr. Whitaker as well, he lives on the other side of that outfall, so if it all blew, it would be awful, but... Yeah. And, I, and I can address well, through, through the chair. Yeah. Wait one second. I, I just have a short statement. Yeah. I mean, living across from Barbara Murray, she would call me up and say, you know, there's water pouring down my driveway um, during certain storms, certain parts of the year. So um, this seems that you're raising a lot of the ground, and it is going to be an improvement, et cetera. But at certain times of the year, there is a lot more water in the area, and it does tend to pour down into the lower area on that side of the street. And we will have to listen to the complaints, or we will have to deal with it. Yeah. Well, it's their problem. I don't think it's going to impact your property, and that doesn't matter that, anyway. Well, we let's problem. let's hear from. But we all live in situ. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, but there's undersized the drainage system. systems all over town. I think. Yeah. It's the, the issue is not that the drain is surcharging. If the drain was too small, then the drain would back up further up the hill, mm -hmm. and that, that's not what's going on. There is a lot of water that comes out the drain because it's a large drain. There's no doubt about that. Hollett Street was just repaved. And if there is somebody on Hollett Street that has water going down their driveway, I can tell you it's not this property because at the last meeting when we came in for the ANRAD, I committed to you guys that I would go out there during a really bad storm event and find out where the water was going. And when Mary Lou's got hit with lightning, I was standing on the site out here watching the water go right down Hollett Street and none of it went up and over this driveway lip that's been put in by DPW mm -hmm. okay, in the last year and a half. So they did a good job rebuilding Hollett Street. The water does not go onto this site and when I'm done, we have to make sure it's not going to come onto our site as well. We certainly don't want that water coming onto our site. But as I had mentioned earlier, we know the end of that pipe is an issue. 
The issue is not how much water is coming out. The issue for us is a safety issue. And as I had said, we are committed to work with DPW to come up with a solution for the end of that pipe. That's at our cost. I mean, and we have met with DPW. They just couldn't do it quick enough. They couldn't agree on this design for that drain fast enough for me to go forward and purchase this property. So I will gladly accept a condition that says I will continue to work with DPW and as long as you people will approve what we come up with with DPW, we will fix the end of that drain so it is safe. And we're not going to change the 24 inch pipe to a 30 inch pipe because that's the town's deal. They own that pipe. We don't own the pipe. And we will give them an easement large enough so that they can maintain that pipe if it ever does blow out. So everything, I think everything they're asking for, we're willing to do. And we've already seen that. We've discussed it. And I think it's very easily conditioned by the board to make sure that that happens while we control the property. After we're done, I don't know what happens. But if we can put those conditions on while we're here in front of you, we're glad to accept them. I think it's a good condition myself. I do too. I'd like to hear. Does anybody else have anything? No. And unfortunately, we don't have the DEP number. So we're not going to close. We need to continue. It can't be closed. The only thing that I may ask is if there are no changes that are coming up. We are trying to move the project along. If we think they may have conditions, it would be great if we could get them. And if all we're waiting for is the DEP number. You can, you can close it here because I have a DEP file over there. Subject to, that's what he just said. If any if DEP puts any conditions in there, we just add them into our order of conditions. I think the only benefit to continuing was we might hear from DPW about what's going to happen at the end of the culvert. I'd, I'd rather accept the condition that we're going to work with DPW because again they're I mean they're swamped so we're but I'm actively working with them trying to trying to get that taken care of and it's to our advantage to take it's care of it. It's not going to get as old as tonight. Oh, no, 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 not tonight. You get, you get three weeks to issue a set of orders. Right. All right because we've got to work on these orders. Oh, yeah. Because yeah. I want you know. I'd rather see the condition go in that you're just talking about with DPW. Yeah. yeah. Then wait to get a response from them. I read the right. condition yes. put in place. Mm -hmm. Because you see what happens. The odds are you don't get that. Right. File number is going to get issued from this. And, and, because, and but the you storm, can't do anything. Remember, like the storm we do all the planting under right. the DEP's purview anyway. So they're just looking at what are they proposing in terms of the Wetlands Protection Act. And in this right. case here, they're proposing to basically you know, replant the 50 foot buffer zone, which I don't see why DEP is, unless you're putting that house right at the uh, wetland edge line, that they're not paying attention. So for right now, I would be willing to bet that the, uh, uh, the number from DEP comes in with no comments, but anything that's there, we can add them in as conditions, you know, or hold up releasing the order conditions should the applicant want to go address anything with DEP. But um, I'm just seeing this, you know, the past few weeks is that DEP is running behind their file. But once you close the hearing, you can't accept any more information. That's right. But it's what we what we're saying. We can't if DEP, you know, you know, put something in there, we automatically make a condition. We just put it right in there. Really? Just like so, natural heritage. It's a one way street. If we close the hearing, uh, subject to DPW and the new owners <laughs> don't agree with DPW, that's their problem. Not our problem. Right. Correct. So, um, well, that's why I want to control that now while we have it. I mean, we're we're committed as developers to make sure that gets taken care of, and we've we that's brought right. that up with the neighbors, and we want to do it. I mean, while we can. So, I I would prefer to see that condition go in, yeah. that we you know we continue or the pro I mean, we'll if I get hit by a bus, whoever takes it over, I'd rather see them be held well, to it. Yep. Yep. The condition will go in either way, or it will be drafted either way, whether you close yep. it. Without his orders, he can't stop working. Right. So well, I don't know why we can't close it all together in two weeks. Just come in, we close, and you get your orders the same night. That's all I asked. If all I ask is, can the orders be ready if you wait and close it in two oh, weeks? Yeah. Can we do the order? That's all I asked. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's all yes. I asked. Fine. 
Yeah. All right, so we'll just Mr. Whitaker, you had something. I, I think before you close, this is just my suggestion that you send at least a letter to the director of public works discussing briefly what's going to happen, that there's going to be a major reconstruction at the end of this drainage system, that the system is there, that they're going to be building a house for 15 feet off of it. And just so they have a chance to give you input, and maybe there's some collaboration by the town boards in looking at this. I don't think it's fair to expect the developer to take care of this. This is something the town of Situ should be on top of. It amazes me that the public works is in Athens here, but that's the way they built it. And that's all I'm going to say. I've said more than enough, maybe, isn't a part. So it's important. Just, why just, rush it? Why just, just, just for the record, when we file, we file nine sets of plans. Those sets of plans go to all the departments in the town hall. One of those is for the DPW, and the DPW does have the plan downstairs. So they are aware that we're looking at this. But I'd be glad to provide a letter and meet with Kevin again before that. I have no problem with that. I make a motion to continue from 8.13. Second. You want, to, you want to continue it or you want to close no, it? We're, we're going to close it that it, night and have the orders. The order is ready that night. I'll, it gives I'll us second time to continue it. To make sure we have everything we want in these orders. Fair enough. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Trees we killed. Look how many trees we killed. <laughs> 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 it's, it's great for Woodlock. No, it's, it's, it's the American irony for the Conservation Commission. We require this because we're here to see the environment. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. There's nothing I love more than to go over these plans. Um, so we have a show cause hearing of Sion at Cavanaugh Road. Six eight two three zero four. Um, so we we originally sent the letter to Mr. Ciel and then we got transferred to the new owner. Who who started the building? Okay, here's here's what I think has happened. There's a talk of Ross was on this morning, which is his partner. Lucio got an order from issues from us to build, to build a project. Could we close that? Well, it's like tell them to go down the wall. It wasn't, it was, I believe, uh, a week ago last Friday, Penny came in and, and, and said she had been, and got a call to go out to Cavanaugh Road and, and start a construction. And what we did was just, we looked to open the file, and we had a recorded DEP file number in there. What we, we didn't have was, you know, if, if you read the order conditions, it's supposed to have the photographs in of the erosion controls in place and the uh, photograph of the DEP sign up and that, you know, a uh, site looking site that you know, taking place with one of the agents. So I'm like, okay. And I think part of the problem was we had just gone through an issue with Mr. C. Owen over on Border Street. So we said, okay, let's just send him a letter and bring for show costs here. In between, we find out that the property is transferred. So when a property transfers, the conditions and the order of conditions transfer the new property. So Andrews uh, got the order of conditions. It has been recorded. It's my understanding from talking with Ross this morning that the photographs of the erosion controls have been put into the file. I think they came in last Friday. With the, uh, and, and I believe the DMP sign is up now. And they wrote, it's just that you know, when we saw it, it was like, well, wait a minute. You know, is, my first thought was, is this the same contractor who's working over at 8 Border Street that we just brought in on a show cause hearing for doing the same thing? I'm like, I was like, you know, one time I'm a nice guy, but this is ridiculous. So. I find out there has been a, 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 a transfer. I think everything is in line now, but it just wasn't in the file. So I think I'll let Andrew take over on when it started and where things were and where we are today. Hi. Hi. 
So I purchased the property from Lucy on July 2nd, I think we closed. Um, I believe that in some conversation that you would have with Ross concerning some other items, yeah. uh, you'd had a brief discussion and we were gonna do some work over there. You told them to get the erosion controls up, take some pictures, get them in uh, to you guys. Uh, I, I did take the pictures, we put the stuff up, I took the pictures, I dropped the ball, I didn't email them in, but I did take them the day that we had everything up. The DEP sign was there, but it must have gotten ta knocked over. It was on the ground when I went out there after I got loose. Oh, okay, because I walked around the property, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, I don't know if the tree guy knocked it over, but it was there. Um, you kept that on the tree? No, I, well, that's, yeah. maybe that was the problem. I know you can't put it on a live tree. I do know that much. Um, so, subsequently, if we're here to put so, them here so, to. So, when Penny brought this to my attention, I guess it's it not last Friday, but the Friday before, or whatever, that yeah. was like 20th or whatever of yeah. July, would the, would the erosion the controls in place? Yes, yes, they were. When, okay. when I was there, so I was. Was, the controls went in prior to any of the clearing outside. Yes. And the DEP sign went up somehow that knocks it. So technically you were in compliance. We just didn't have the stuff into the box. Sure. Yeah, and again, that was, I didn't, I actually stood with Carol and emailed them from the pictures from my phone last Thursday afternoon or Friday. Uh -huh. So, so just, I mean, I, I'm just glad I'm not dealing with the same contractor from a forestry we just went, but, you know, from now on, just make sure that this stuff gets in in time. The erosion controls were in place. It was going on. The, the DEP sign was there. But, but just what happens is, is to have the once we get the erosion control photographs in and the DEP files on them, the first thing we look at is that go, okay, you know, we've got that. But the other thing is that at this point we still didn't have a letter on who the new owner was. So our thing was Sion still on it. So when Property transfer is one of the first things you do to get the order of uh, conditions transferred to you to come into Concord to get the new name on there as, as, the, as the property owner. And, and are you building, is this for your own house? Or? Uh, we're, we're building a house there. Okay, so, so, it, 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 so that it comes in with who, who the new owner is. So we have that in the file, but, and then name and addresses of the contractors who's gonna be working on the site. And a lot of these we can start without a pre-construction meeting if we have everything in the file. Okay, the job's gonna start on August uh, 5th and the contractor's gonna be so-and-so, here's his uh, phone cell number, here's his email, and the subcontractor, the tree guy, is gonna be so-and-so, same information. And here's the erosion control photographs, here's the, uh, that they're already in place, here's the DEP file number sign that's up then technically that job's ready to go. So the only thing is here, I'm looking at it and I find out, well, it's been sold in the this new property because we didn't have that in file. Sure. But that's supposed to be in the But two things, one, it's in the order. So either either the CEO or yourself, if you had read the order, you would have solved it, everything you just said. Just the, just the name of those sure. people in charge. Uh, but the second thing is the erosion controls need to be told in. Not yeah, gonna, it's not going to work. And to be honest with you, we I put those up so I could clear the trees. They staked last Thursday. They staked the actual hay bale line. I it was the wood. It was but so those, thickly wooded. They put the they put hay bales in now. They put well. I haven't done a thing because I got the the yeah, cease and desist. Good, but I had yeah. I we were on the schedule to have the actual line staked. I was kind of guesstimating. Uh, we cleared conservatively so that I could see what was going on. Just had it surveyed to put the full line in um, and then and then from there I, I would know which because the the plan is pretty specific as to which trees yeah. can and cannot come down so yeah. I, I wasn't exactly sure it was so thickly wooded I couldn't make heads or tails of it so we did the conservative clearing had it staked our intention now is to go back in and do the full towed in because we'll be there for a considerable amount of time building the house so we want to get that in correctly okay. make sure the trees are correct um, and proceed from there. I, I, would, I would suggest that the silters that should have been towed in already. I know you've cleared it, but there's a lot of there's some earthwork that's been done too. The bare earth that's exposed and the space in the silter is not going to work. It's not going to hold the silt back. Okay. So I think before you do the cleaning the trees is one thing, but once you start earthwork, 
I think the silk code ought to be towed in for future folks. But this one is hand on this. Sure. It's just it's just sitting on the surface. It's not gonna work. Okay. And that that's I think silk cards overall are a low choice for erosion control barriers. We often find more than often find that silk, they get curtains, silk curtains don't work. Silk socks. They just look, you know. <laughs> Okay. I think the diameter of the silt sock is really important too because I noticed on that house over at First Parish that one, the mud, the silt, it doesn't take much to get over an 8 inch. I think we need to make a 12 inch minimum. We well, came in. You so I, we think we're, we're, we think just make sure the next time you know we what do you have orders to do though for now. I think we'll, we'll, make, we'll make this mistake. Our big thing here is we're sending stuff to the old property owner. Yeah. Yeah, we're always going to be notified too. We're getting emails forwarded from our closing attorney. So. Well. Could you let us know when you do tell them? Yeah. Sure. Just bring in a couple of So you know, down yep. Down the top of We'll do that this week. Take some photos. Sure. Okay. Well, I guess you can get back to work. Okay. Can get back to work. And, uh, Good luck. I'm glad it wasn't the same contract. Yeah. Well, when I ever drove by on there, you got to be kidding me, and then there's nothing in the folder. Yeah. But this is going to be a bit. You, know, you have to understand that the show cause hearing for the other contractor was about four weeks ago. So we were sitting there going, piecing things together, I'm like, you can't. So. Okay. So it's important to me to order the commission as a result. If you had read them right, right away, yep. it tells you all the stuff you have to do before you start working. Yeah, no. short beats of route, you know. Yeah, no, but it's, you, you don't know how frustrating it is to us. I understand. We go out and do for it, but at least you can do it in the So I guess you can buy it. It's Get back to work out there. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. All right, so. Orders of conditions. You want to get the other other items out of the way first? Well, no, we have the ADC report. Yeah. All right. Uh, we have a proposed donation of a piece of property. Um, the, the aerial photo that I printed, I'll see if we get to you, was it's all marsh. It's on Hadley Road. You know, the new culvert, the, the, the new uh, tide gauges going into the Lunch Park Pond. From, from that tie gate is one parcel that's privately owned, and then the next is a, the next five small parcels all salt marked would be offered to the town. The town administrator would like to know if the commission is interested in accepting them as a gift. It's all salt marked. Uh, who, owns, who owns the other parcels? There's one, there's one part. Yeah, the and then, and then and the one's And then the next is small, small slivers of undevelopable salt marsh. That are owned by? Wednesday or Thursday? I guess it would be Thursday. Hold on. Uh, I'll see if I can see it. Yeah, they yeah, just. Labrador. Yeah. Oh, we own them all? It's in there, yes. You own all five. They're just small slivers. But it's all salt marsh, so the town administrator wants to know if they want to move to the next step in terms Why doesn't he do them all at the same time? Yes. Yeah, they're offering all five. They're offering the whole. Oh, all five? All, the whole, yeah, they're offering all five. Two. Under the care of the commission, to the town under the care of the commission, if you want to go to the next step. Who so owns the pond? Two. Who owns what? The pond. What's the the pond? town? The, the squash pond. pond. Oh, the pond. I'm not sure. I mean, it would seem to me that the that the same entity should own it at all. Mother Nature owns it. No, no. I, I think the it, these are. right. But the question the is, do we want to accept the property so being offered on the Glenwood side? <laughs> I think the same okay. people who, who own yeah. the surrounding yeah. marsh should own that Mark as well. Oh, well, you know what? If you, you, you get to the go to that's my yeah. yeah. no, yes, yes or no. There's no question. If we own the other, we should own this. When you're driving down Hadley Road, then you must wash that pond opens up, and there's that new tide gate. Yeah, and this is where the house that Jamie Mankovich, Mankovich yeah. was that, and yeah. then is yeah. it on that side of the street? No, is that house? No, it's on the pond side. Oh, all right, that's what I was wondering. Okay, so on the pond. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I, do it's we on, have to on the pond itself? Do we have to pay for deeds or anything, and do we have the resources to cover that? Uh, See, that's what the pond. Unanswered questions. People, we don't know. They're offering it to the town. We would have to negotiate the fee 
at the present time, there's no offer of paying to record it and change the transfer of property. So at the present time, I would suggest it's probably a fall on the town. Right, but our input is just, I'll they're donating it to the town. Do we, are we against it right. or we for it? Are we in support of moving it to the next step to get more information in terms of the property, of turning sure. it over to the town and so forth? Why not? I, sure. I have no problem with it, but I just, these people, most people that give us property, they don't want to pay the taxes right. anymore. And that's fine. I'm, but I'm starting to think, I think these people should be the ones paying for the transfer of the deed because we're alleviating taxes for the rest of your life on this particular piece of property. We're not, we, yes, and it isn't build, buildable property. I, it's just a thought coming. You know, because um, we don't have a budget to do anything, let's face it, Con Con doesn't. That's and I'm just, I'm just throw, throwing this out to you. Yeah. I think that, I mean, that's a subject to, that uh, if, if, if all we're going to discuss or all we're going to, to answer is the question, do we think that the town or ourselves or someone should take this property? I would say the answer is yes. Yes, it is. Yes. Then, the, then, you know, the problems are all in the details, like exactly what you're saying. It would be great if we had a conservation fund, a mitigation like fund that we could then use to pay for these deeds to, but I'm pretty sure if we did, all that money would go into the town coffers anyway. Well, well, I can write, I can, when I respond but to it, my response. But the town has actually bought land, correct? There is a conservation yes. fund. Yeah, we bought land. We, right. we do buy so, land. So getting right. land for free, free right. right, is still way better than buying land. But, right. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. yeah. It, uh, it's a lot cheaper we have buying. Maybe it's $75 to file the fee. I mean, you know, it's total match. Right, and thus, the taxes are very small. CPC land that is not marshed. Right, in. but it's also occasionally yes it is. But on on the whole there's a lot of upland too that right. buying that you can use. We can't really use much. It's just a thought. Time, times are tough, right? And I'm just you know, hundred bucks here, hundred bucks there. I, I but definitely, yeah, we always want land. Why, why wouldn't you petition the CPC to ask if they pay the recording fees for anybody who wants to donate? Well, I don't know. Space? Maybe, maybe we. That's why don't we just tell the administrator? I think it's a good idea, money. and yeah. that's it. They They're going to handle it, right? Funds. They, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. We could just say to the administrator, "We yeah. think this is good, and we're done." Because it's all yeah. yeah. It's all marshal. It's a resource, and if, and then if it does, if questions do come back about that, right, yeah. we'll. we'll, we'll We'll talk address about those issues when they, they arise. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah. 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 So yeah. interested in it. But that's interesting. Both so for that. So Whatever the fund. I mean, you're not talking a heck of a lot of money, but you know, it's money that we don't have. Con yeah. doesn't have. We do have a conservation fund, but it's static. There's no money going into it. And it's yeah, yeah, right. right. So, so there's no we've got to use it sparingly. We have to. No mechanism to put money into it. Well, don't, don't we have to. It's one of those sinking funds. So there has to be a separate way. Okay, I make a motion that we um, would love to accept them. Send a lot of the Mr. Conn administrator. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody in the room? I second the motion. Second. All of the band. Oh. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. Okay, the other two rooms were put on by someone unbeknownst to me. <laughs> the stormwater bylaw. The zero, zero, zero Grant Hadley Road and the stormwater bylaw fee. Paul just said he put that bylaw fee in. I'm not sure where he went. He's Is he coming back or no? No, no he went he by with a big <laughs> smile. <laughs> <laughs> Earlier with the hearing, he did say, Why put that on? What's so we'll, we'll continue it. We'll, yeah, we'll continue. Yeah, that's right. What about what's the Rhode Island Road deal? Oh, Wood Island Road. Wood Island Wood Road. Island. Oh, there's a, a certificate of compliance. I, I want oh. to Okay. Was a request. I don't know what that is. Okay, so you're doing all these certificate of compliance as well as I do. Can I, can I discuss signs? Yeah. Or do we oh, need, yeah, we we're going to need time to do that. Oh, the signs oh, sign there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, as I think everyone but probably Richard uh, knows, um, we have had issues 
primarily in the West End uh, relative to what is allowed and what isn't allowed as um, uh, as uses for the primarily for the West End. Um, it seems to have come down to the question of hunting and whether hunting is permitted or not permitted. What I am suggesting, well, I guess I can I can bring you all up on what I know. Uh, the bylaws committee of which I am the liaison, to which I am the liaison, uh, met and had a very good meeting. Um, I was told by their secretary of the night, I suppose, uh, that I would get a copy of the, of the minutes and then he and I would sit down together. That has not yet taken place. Um, but in the meantime, um, uh, Frank had, had, I think, told you, Penny, yes, he told me to my tell instigation, you we should go ahead and get sign. some signs up in the West End or wherever if we possibly can. Uh, so, in front of you, um, you have two suggested wordings. Um, one is wording that is used um, on, on Wapatuck uh, Park, uh, and we would change, obviously, this division of forest and, and parks property to situate conservation, or something along those lines. But essentially what it says is that hunting is allowed on the property, uh, watch out, uh, be careful. Um, hunting is not allowed on Sundays or within 500 feet of buildings, uh, both of which would, uh, would automatically be part of, of our signage. Um, the one, the other one we've got is welcome to Carl Pipes Memorial Trail. The de that verbiage, I think we need to discuss. Um, but the sign itself, or the verbiage on the sign itself, is very similar to the other notice, except it says, um, target shooting is prohibited. Now, that is something that we as a commission have not discussed um, in its um, in, in that one particular statement and uh, because heretofore it's sort of been all part of the hunting or hunting or no hunting. However, um, it, came, it came up in several conversations that uh, by people who live or who owe, are abutters to the West End that target shooting does take place out there. It is un, um, unregulated unsupervised. and unsupervised. And um, it probably, or is, is potentially one of the reasons why this whole thing came up in the first place. I personally think that we should ban uh, target shooting on any of the properties that we have that if it's unregulated. Um, I think the only places where that would be a, a factor would be uh, on, the, uh, on the Bates Lane area, the South Swamp, and on the, uh, on the driftway. I think that this sign that, that has the target shooting prohi prohibition on it should be the one that we approve. Um, I would I would like to get that approved. Obviously, we'd have to put in um, telephone numbers or whatever for the uh, for the Sichuan Police Department. Um, but I would like to make it, uh, or I would like the commission to uh, prohibit unsupervised target shooting on situate on on concom land uh, and i think that we have every everybody that i've talked to said that we have the the uh the right to do that 
uh, even the head of the bylaws committee said that it's up to CONCOM to um, uh, to write the regulations on CONCOM land. And I think that that should be a regulation. I think un unsupervised target shooting is uh, insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's no backstops and stuff. No backstops. You hunt in the woods, you shoot on a range. Yeah, yeah. Right. 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 And Tony also met with Ernie Foster in making these. Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Know, from had, the from the standpoint of paying for these signs. Yeah. Uh, Ernie Foster, who was the guy that uh, was more or less behind that um, understand before you ban uh, meeting last Wednesday night. Yeah. Uh, has stated that he has money in his pocket for as many as 30 signs. Um, so, if if we could approve that uh, target shooting is prohibited, then the question is, and maybe this is something, Penny, that you and I can come to grips with, how many, I think that these signs should be at trailheads. Um, not interior, but at trailheads. At the entrances. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah exactly. Um, and uh, I'm thinking I would like to put one up down at the driftway, um, you know, right under where it says, you know, shooting only in the uh, in the marsh or whatever the heck that that one says. Could I ask the size of these? What did you guys? Do? I don't know. I mean, we can do it this size. We can. I'd like to do it bigger. 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 Yeah. Bigger. Um, I would. I. I think the material <coughs> that they're on is is more a matter of maybe what uh, uh, what Webster One Source, which is uh, Ernie Foster's company. Uh, and I can agree on because he's going to pay for them. Oh, he's yeah. They, Get them as big as possible. Money. Uh, the the other the thing is, we don't call the Carl Pice Memorial Trail Carl Pice Memorial Trail. If we, f no, on this I because there are other accesses. I, I think it should say "Welcome to Conservation Trails" for all of us. Then you're not earmarking. Welcome to Conservation it. Land. Yeah. yeah. And then tell hunting. Because that will go for the marshes. Mm -hmm. They'll go for all right. the trails. Right. They'll go yeah. if once we get the Crosby property, if that ever gets squared out, you're going towards the South Swamp. So Conservation Commission land Conservation. slash Conservation. welcome to the town of Situate Conservation. 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 Yeah. 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 Situate Conservation Land. Yeah. 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 Some, something right. like yeah. that. That encompasses everything. Well, 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 I, 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 I agree with that, but I think that there should be a separate sign that says what Conservation Land it is. Something separate, oh. something separate that tells you you are yeah, at Grace Lane Conservation and you're at the driftway trail. I think there ought to be that as well. Because this year we will have a, a map of all the conservation lands that will be gained. I think it would be nice to, to know what conservation lands are. Well, you mean in addition to this, right? Yes, yes, right. Yeah. I, I do have another comment though. This property is open to all uses. Are they open up to motorized vehicles? Um, motorbikes, motor bikes, dirt bikes? No, we That's haven't good decided point. that. Uh, I just think all uses need that, to be right. that it's not been decided, the motor vehicle. I, I think so. We, we, we kind of made uses. up, because we kept the trail real narrow right. there. You really can't get motors, but kids do. And I don't have a problem when they do. So do, we want to, do we want to address that all uses thing? Good point, Jim. Are all conservation lands, uh, are they open to passive recreation, or are there, or are there some? that are opened up to motorized I, I don't know any. Actually, I think this, the sign is just for hunting, period. I don't think... All uses? I mean, because pe people are going to go out on motorbikes and uh, uh, ATVs. Uh, no. not, not here. The trustees, generally, I think we need to make it light. Every piece of land no more vehicles, but they well, we're in the process of doing that. Now, on that subject, I think anything that is smaller no, or too small, just a yeah, second, no, okay. too small yeah. to actually have hunting in it, we should post a no hunting sign so that everybody knows. But I don't think that we're there yet, are we? We don't know no, the size no. of our properties. No. We, we 
will, by the end of this year, we should have a handle on all the all the conservation parcels, yep. the size of them, the trails mapped out. We'll have a we'll have a map of the, each conservation right. with the trails, and then from there start looking at what uses are appropriate and which are not through public hearings and through public meetings. And but since this is about hunting, how about we say this property is open to, to hunting, hunting during sure. various right. statewide right. hunting yeah, seasons? Yeah, they'll, they'll separate the, that. Yeah, you know, that's a good. Yeah, because yeah. we're trying. What yeah. about the third section down the, for the the whole C, the Mass Wildlife Abstracts posted at each DEM facility's headquarters building? I mean, is that really relevant? Um, I mean, you could get check that their out website. There and increase the font. It should be a that says um, hunting is allowed. We should be able to give them a website. A website, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah but you could shorten that that, that paragraph yeah, a lot. I mean, I don't even know where a DEM facility. I'm a is. hunter, and I don't know what. Oh, so we'll so okay. Maybe so we'll condense that. Park at the Blue Hills. So the laws I mean. are on the laws are on the website. You right. The seasons, the seasons. For further information on seasons, specific dates of each PC, uh, we'll put the website. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. No, you have to do that because right, that, so that they can look it up. Yeah, I think right. that's what an e EPO is, isn't it? Well, it says for any violations, contact such a police at or EP, uh, yeah. I don't know. What's EPO? I don't know what an EPO is. Environmental police officer. Oh, that's it's what? Environmental police. Environmental police. Yeah. Oh, environmental yeah. protection that's office. Right. Environmental the environmental police police yeah. office. Police. They're the other guys out on boats besides yeah, the Coast Guard James, yeah. and Harbor Jason Masters. Said, you need to call your town police or the environmental police, you're right. Yeah. Right. yeah. But call the town okay. police. He says there aren't enough environmental You want to give me some wording on that? Yeah, let me see. Yeah. You don't have to do it right now. Yeah. Put the report. Please refer to that. Oh, yeah. 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 No, no, no. Yeah. Okay, so we'll, we'll do this. We'll call it Situate Conservation Land. And thus we can we'll be able to put it wherever we yeah. want. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. And and Penny, yeah. you and I will discuss how many of these we need. Yes, I have to sit and the other, and think for a minute. Yeah, I'll the other question to is, um, does Maxwell Trust land that that's our land? No. Is no, it? they they own two two no. parcels themselves. I mean the the land but that we have we, given we to we Maxwell Trust. No, Maxwell Trust. The town owns, Maxwell only has two pieces that with the Muncie deal that they own outright because at that time CPC didn't want to go for all the bucks. So they kept two pieces of land they still own. Neither of which have a trail on um, No, they don't. You're right, Stephen. We kind, kind of skirt around. Now, hunters do go in the middle there or not because that's where the deer hunting is. The post but, yeah, I, I mean, you're not going to walk across. It's really tricky if you do. Okay. So, but that would be one of the spots where we would be putting signs where you would come close to the land, but you're not actually on it. Yeah, well, we can talk to Wayne. Condo, so, if anyone's shooting there, the bucks are going to be out there in five minutes. Oh, yeah. 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 We can talk to Wayne and Cindy and get that straightened out. I don't think that's that's not me. Well, I've got the map and I'll show you what okay? yeah, right. The trail does not go through. Okay, it's good. It's all on town property. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm out of here. Right. All here. <laughs> like you can't go yet. <laughs> yeah, do you want to do this, Tony? We can if... Yeah. If, uh, if you you guys, this he's is the what we had our meeting about. Mm -hmm. uh, should we wait for Frank to be here? I don't know. Or are we usurping his authority? Okay. I wouldn't want to, I guess, is what I'm okay. trying to no, say. No, okay. the town, town, the TTA are Okay, I, so I mean, in terms exactly of the, the idea of taking that as an opportunity to acknowledge the work that people do at the town meeting, yeah. that was the big selling point to me. I just want you guys both to know that that was oh, yeah. important to me. That Good we make sure we make it clear that people are helping out the Conservation Commission. And the and town administrator said there are other ways of doing that as well. So. Okay, good. Okay. So then if you want to... Well, why don't you, Penny, why don't you hand that out and we can discuss it in the next yeah. meeting. Or what yeah. happened if we... Um, no, no, those are both for you. Oh, I'm sorry, thank you. Todd, Tony, and myself, we met in 
we will go and hold the um, um, associate members in, in the process. Some of the associate members, if you look on the thing, there's a bond dike, there's, um, there's all these. I don't know how you have that anyway. Huh? I don't even have that anymore. I'm playing on the website. Yeah. That's where I told it from. <laughs> but anyways, we sat down and we were talking because you have a whole, whole bunch of people that we don't even know if they're dead or alive. Um, there's a McGuire guy. Huh? If you go on. No, no, I, I read the Who, who wrote this? Yeah. Um, you? No. <laughs> yes. After talking to you. Don't. This, no, this is our, this is our. It's on the website. It's on the website. Yeah. So anyways. The 128 Gilson Road one. Chandler's. That, that oh. We don't even know if they exist. Well. We've never seen them. So. In the process of that, then we got, got out the conservation <laughs> associate members' rules and everything. And he was a steel guy. Yeah. Tony yeah. went, the second page is from Tony when he went to see her. Right. And come to find out, because we've never gone by the rules that we ourselves made up in set, we don't have any associate members at this point in time. They're now in boys because of the fact that we have, we only did this that maybe, was it four, four years ago, Tony? Four, four or five years ago. What? What did we, we do? We did the rules for the associate members. I, it, it's yeah, been a while. It's been a long time. <laughs> We've never done anything since then. Right. And some of these people, we don't even know who they are. We right. don't know if they're dead or alive. They're um, effectively and, not participating. No, well, in the thing is, in too, in if, if you read this, yes. they're supposed to be doing this specific job, right. not, you know, really know you just net. But we want people to volunteer. But let's face it, how many volunteers do we get? I mean, we had to refound Richard after, I hate to tell you how many people I talked to trying to get people on board. You mean you carefully selected Richard. No, no, we have we also also <laughs> there is an email that he was he was vetted so many times it took forever. Students and members of the general public to come and help us out. We need we we need help, but we also and so in, in so kind of we're starting from square one. Mm -hmm. Right. And what I'd like to do is I would like people. If anybody does want to volunteer, apply for it. You know, and come before us and say, hey, gee, I'd, I'd like to help you do this or that. Mm -hmm. Instead of just having this carte blank of associate members that we don't even know who they are. We don't know where they are. I mean, I'll, I don't I'll think you need to sell this. I think everybody oh. here is complete right. agreement. Oh, no, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's nothing to sell. You know, there's nothing well, to do see, because there, everybody there is non-existent anyway. I know, but Penny has to see how it leads to it through time. Exactly, square one. <laughs> so but the GA settled that problem by saying, you don't have any because you never voted them every year. Right. So we and should you remove their names from the website. Yeah, they should, be should be removed from the website. Mm -hmm. And we start from square one. And mm -hmm. anybody knows somebody that wants to come and help do some project in Todd, because we do want to recognize people. Because Frank said, well, we've got to give them recognition, which is true. I don't know what recognition we get for all the hours we put in. <laughs> but, you know, in town, town meeting, um, Todd graciously said, you did get up and anybody that volunteered during the year and did some, you know, helped us, would, would acknowledge them at a public forum like that. So. Can we acknowledge ourselves then? I'll be like, hey, no. we that filing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, see, that's it. We can't even get the kids to come and file. Yeah, we get to be on TV. That's right now. Yeah. Okay. Like Just in case you forgot. Okay, okay let, uh, we can, let's discuss this when... Uh, uh, when, when the real chairman yeah. is yeah. here, well, so that Todd doesn't feel. I know. He's going to come by my house. And no, no, he's not. Take down my fence. Todd. Todd. But I don't talk to him. I know. And he said, actually, Trish told him. Because Tony told Trish, you don't even. Trish told Tony we don't have any associate members. So mm -hmm. she told him. Yeah. He did. 
Mm-hmm. That's exactly what she said. Yeah. <laughs> that is what she said. She said just, just read your own rules. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we okay. have to do um, the orders. Order of conditions. Just Winchester. Read, read that because we're, uh, we're not doing those tonight. Okay. So the down the key, 62 bullet club. Win, Winchester. I think you were asking. Why are you asking? That's the old That's the old right. Oh, aren't we obnoxious too? <laughs> and on TV. <laughs> That's okay. I make a motion to accept Winchester as written. I second the motion. All there. Okay. Aye. All right. Opposed? I, I just wanted. Uh, Keith, yes. 62 Booth Hill Road, addition. You were you were asking to work this. And that was all fine. Uh, I make a motion to accept the motion. She has not replied. I second the motion. Uh, in any way, shape, or form. Uh, she, she's accepted. She's accepted uh, my memory. Farina, 19 to Old Mouth Road. That was that one that we finished on but they still need it. They bonded. She has not responded. They, they, they need the um, number, I thought. So. Yeah. No, that was 25 River. That needed the D. That was 10 days ago. Um, wait, wait, you know, all right. Old Mouth, we closed. I asked for a raise for the road eight months ago. That's closed. They, they have everything. They and they have the DP, Carol? Thank you. And that's just a straightforward step. I think it's another one. Yeah. Wait, we closed them. To no. Yeah, no, the one. Um, 19 Where, Old Mouth. River Street, I think no, it was. Yeah, don't. But River Street is on hold. Right. Farina, yeah. we closed. All right, all right. Farina, we closed. That's yes. Right. Yes. I make a motion yeah. to accept the order that's written. I second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Radzovich, 68 Glades Road, installing Sonitudes to support the second story garage. On the garage. I didn't see anything. No. I weren't at the meeting, so I don't know. It was so simple. Oh, that, that was just the announcement. Cut the holes in the floor. Yeah. Yeah. Interior. Yeah. Interior, yeah. Yeah. interior yeah. puddings. I make the motion to accept the amendment. I second. The 68 blades. All in favor? Aye. 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 River Street's the one that's continued. Right. right. Yeah. So we move to the What, what about I certificates second. of compliance? Do we have to? Uh, no, they're no. just on no. so we know. We just we, signed we them. Just he's, signed. he's checked them. And you've seen them. each of them? All except the 64.6 in the fall that I did the, all the others. Motion for Okay. We just had issues with, a, with an agent aye. that aye. said, yes, we had seen them and hadn't seen them. But they all came back to haunt us. Yeah.